everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lone Coat Mafia Podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's frontman and main host. And today, thanks to the power of technology, we're bringing you another hostful. That's right, I always try to give you a lot of energy for these, even though we are mafia-themed podcasts, and I should be calling all of you listeners Goombas, but we're on a roll, we've got energy, we've got content for you this week, folks, that's right, Big Candy, uh, because of certain circumstances, uh, we've been doing a lot of Skype hostfuls, I hope you're enjoying them, we haven't had Big Candy in uh, our virtual studio, so to speak, yes, I'm using air quotes in an audio podcast, so... He's been in our virtual studio to record a few things, uh, and this week we had a couple things to discuss and say, and things that we almost rambled on about, from uh, stuff from Stan Lee Lee to uh, uh, Awesome Con and more. Uh, You gotta hear it. You know what? You will hear it, because I am going to put it right after this. And let's go. Hey, we're we're back, folks. I was... Skype-based hopeful again this week, as I said in our intro, and there's a, it's been three weeks since we had Big Candy in our virtual studio, thanks to Skype. Hello, how are you doing? I'm in my nuclear bunker, uh, trying not to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, one of the things... I think a little weird down here, <laughs> uh, breaking up, so sorry. <laughs> well, tell John Connor to lay off the shit, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quit tr- having John Connor fiddle with those goddamn controls. <laughs> well, we had a lot, kind of a, between, I won't say the past few weeks, we, but we had a couple of interesting things that we could uh, get into a little bit without before we kind of ruin it with language. Uh, <laughs> one of which is, this, yeah. I know you, <laughs> you, they, uh, you wanted to talk about a little bit was the whole aspect of uh, the Stan Lee incident, or I should say oh. Stan Lee incidents. Uh, uh, the reason why I say that, folks, is because over the past few weeks, uh, one report has come out, invol- or I should say the first report that came out involving uh, the legendary... The inf- I won't say infamous, but the famous uh, Stan Lee, the create—I won't say the creator of Mar- Marvel Comics, but he uh, set in motion a lot of the characters that we know today. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the report that came out was three hundred thousand was three hundred thousand dollars was stolen out of his account. A lot of the reports that were coming in at that time didn't really name names, I think, because uh, if they have somebody investigating it, and if they have uh, names and addresses and all that whole happy horse shit, mm-hmm. they don't want to leak that information because it's an ongoing investigation. Right. And about uh, two weeks later, yeah. Maybe three, uh, give or take. Uh, we got the reports. Uh, I won't say uh, we got, but uh, a lot of reports were coming in that. Schools, uh, have you heard it here first? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that his nurses were trying to file uh, sexual harassment claims against Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah. um, and. Again, the lawyers came out. They said, "Well, one, he's like not, what ninety six right now, ninety four, yeah, ninety six, exactly. give or t- give, give or take." Um, whether <laughs> it's going to be one of those things like, "Oh my God, Stan Lee passed away." Well, he was ninety six. <laughs> um, exactly. It's like, yeah, good life. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good run. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think it would be a more shocker of uh, if Betty White passed away. Yeah. <laughs> It's like who's who took her head? You know, who, who, who announced there could be only one and took her head? You know? uh, uh, I, and I say that about Betty White with the all intensive kindness, you know, uh, because I think she's probably in person the sweetest person you could speak to. But uh, really <laughs> down to her and Dick Clark, <laughs> right, right. 
There can be only one. Only one. one. Uh, with Betty White, I think she doesn't look 96. I, I, I would probably, or she's probably in her 90s as well, but. Gotta be. Uh, I, she doesn't look, she looks maybe 70, at least. Which is funny, because, like, see, it's, it's, she's one of those people like George Burns. Like, when he was alive, he was old forever. He was old, like, back in the day. Like, right. You know? It's like, all I can remember is this person being old. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, they just keep going. And going, and going, like, who, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> it's like it was almost like a shocker when Dick Clark Dick Clark yeah, what right. the hell uh, but the thing is with the whole aspect of Stan Lee no one was buying this shit no. and it's like it's like well the nurses were saying he showed us his private parts and I'm like well if you're helping like I think one person's like well you was stating in their article or on their YouTube video was like well they have to bathe them yeah, of course it, you're going to, you know, it's like... Here's the funny thing, like, my wife was saying, she works in the medical field, so where she works, uh, I, I mean, I, she she used to tell me all the time, because it was funny, but it happens so often now that she just doesn't even mention it unless I ask her, you know, so how many, like, dudes wieners did you see today? And, like, you know, she'll be like, oh, like, a couple. And it's because, like, guys are constantly, like, in those little... You know, uh, uh, the hospital gowns, or they're like in you know in some kind of predicament where they don't have any underwear on or clothes on, and they're at a hospital, they're being taken care of, and she sees junk all day. It's just it's one of those things, right? So it's like, <clears throat> and the best line about the entire thing that I that I found to be funny was uh, I think diversity and <laughs> diversity in comics says, "What do you do when a ninety five year old man?" puts his hand on you, you, you move a little to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's how yeah. you escape that. Yeah, it's... it's Like, really? It's Vince, not were like... You, were you that threatened? Like, you, you just couldn't get away. Is that right? Is that what happened? It's, yeah, it's not like... Uh, uh, in the book um, that uh, Jeff Dunham wrote about his career, mm-hmm. and he talks about uh, George Burns when he was on... He was at an event with George Burns, who was his idol, one of his idols. Yeah. And he said, when he met him, he was this frail. He's like, he didn't, he wasn't saying anything about any disrespect to her. Right, but right. he's like, it was like, here's this frail old man, and that seemed so slow. But once it was his time to be on stage, he became energetic. He fed right. off that energy. And here he was, George Burns Entertainer. Hey, how you doing? Cigar, you know, women and, you know, martinis and that whole aspect. And when it was time, it was like he powered down. It was time to release that energy. And it, it was, you know, it was a sight to see. And I think with Stan Lee, I know in one of the articles they kind of tie, were trying to tie this whole $300,000 theft with what's going on now. Right. But I don't know exactly how that's going to tie. But you know, but in George Burns's case, it, it, this could be the similar thing. He's not in the movies and everything else. When it's involved in conventions, he he might be that energetic guy. And you know, yeah. hey, true believer, how you doing today? You know, shaking yeah. hands and you know that whole ordeal. But in in private, he's probably just you know, I I don't have the. Can you help me up? My you know, can you oh, yeah. you know I. Being 96, you know, right. it's that sort of ordeal. And I mean, that's when life is just... Right. You know, you've done everything you can do. You're ready to just take a nap. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, the, it, it's the whole Me Too movement thing. It, it's, it's, it's become a witch hunt. And it... We also saw it uh, in the past week with the whole Aziz Ansari thing. I'm not his biggest fan. I don't particularly like the guy. Like, I don't think he's funny. But, like, I felt really bad for him. Uh, have you heard of this? A little bit. Something that, like, signals were... I heard some stuff that, like, signals were crossed. and yeah, it, uh, it was Basically, they had an awkward date. And yeah. Which ended in, like, a little bit of, like, foreplay, and she went home crying in a cab. It's like, 
you know, what were your expectations? Like, you know, the, you went back to the guy's apartment, like, after having drinks out with him, and, you know, he did things, she did things as well. I'm sorry, where I come from, like, that kind of leads to things. And so if his expectations were sex, then, you know, she was given all the signals and then saying in the same breath after she gives him a blowjob saying, "Ah, I'm not so sure I want to do this. You can't do that. (laughs) That's not how how guys work. (laughs) It's uh, I'm not saying sexual such. I want to say that sexual assault True sexual assault is a bad thing, okay? Yeah. That's plain, plain and simple. And yet, uh, what Harvey Weinstein and yeah. the rest of those fucktards did, you know, oh, you got to do this in order to enhance your career or get a part, that's wrong. Yeah. That is blatantly wrong. Uh, a lot of the stuff that has come out uh, recently with the Me Too movement is wrong, but I share your concerns and, <clears throat> excuse me, the, in regards to when something like this happens, that you go to the point, it's like, wait a minute, now I'm going to, it's like, where is that line now? You blurn it. Right, that to, you know, it's what I've said in the, Just in the past. The, yeah. uh, in regards to this, that at one point that, oh, I, at this point, I, you know, in this circumstance, from what you're telling me, it's like, okay, she gave him a blowjob. And afterwards, you know, stopped. Fine, you stopped. You went all of a sudden. You went away in a cab, but you didn't. At one, no point between the foreplay and the blowjob did you say, "You know what? I'm going to just get up and go." Right, it, and that's yeah. the biggest thing. She's an adult. If she was un, unhappy or unsatisfied or felt weird about it, nobody was. He wasn't preventing her from leaving. At, at one point, she even said in her report that. He even said to her, if you're not into it, it's not fun. Right. You know, he gave her every out that I think he could possibly give her. And at the same time, like, she's trying to say, like, act like she was a prisoner. She couldn't leave. And it was like, lady, I mean, you have to read it. Uh, if if you get a chance, yeah. read, read the thing. But, like, it's – it's I, I read it to my wife, and even she was like, she's an adult. She could leave if she was uncomfortable. Right. And, and it's just like the Stan Lee thing. Like if his nurses had any problems with his with his behavior, first of all, you don't go to the media. That's a HIPAA violation. Second of all, she they should have took it to whatever management or supervision that they have and, and kept it there. It should have yeah. been like you know, uh Mr. Lee is like uh acting inappropriately, um, you know, can we either get reassigned or have you know somebody else or like you know can we ha- can we have someone speak to his uh, his his management his people or, yeah yeah his people you know you know address the situation properly <clears throat> to me it just seems like they they're out for money right I, mean, I, I I hate to say it like you know I I don't want to be one of those people oh you're a victim blamer well you know. With the frivolous stuff that's going on now with this whole Me Too thing, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Like everybody's kind of chiming in. It's it's become a witch hunt, and it's like you just see it all over the place now. It's like everybody's blaming everybody for everything. Going back like twenty and twenty five years, like well, when I was on the set of this, like this guy groped me, and it's like, listen, to you it may have been like that, you know, or even like you know. If it happened then, you should have said something then. Like, you, you don't wait 30 years and say, well, this guy who's popular now, you know, I'm going to take him down. Like, yeah, because, uh, like, you've seen it with, uh, I think, Days of Future Past a few years ago with that yeah. that particular instance. It's like they were expecting this particular movie or even nowadays with any particular movie, whether it's uh, Star Wars, Jumanji, uh, uh, whatever, the or – coming months, uh, Marvel's Avengers Infinity War, oh, this movie is going to be, you know, a billion dollar franchise or two billion dollar franchise. Let me say something now about this person. That way I could get some of that movie money. Right, exactly. And it's, and it's, that's why it becomes it, suspicious. Know, 
it was like the whole thing with uh, Ben Affleck. I'm again, I'm not a huge Affleck fan. Right. But, like apparently he had groped. Uh, what was her name? Whomever. Uh, it was. But way back in the day. Yeah, somebody from back like when they were first starting out acting, and at the time they laughed it off. They thought it was like funny or something because. Believe it or not, back in the day, you could joke around like that. It wasn't a big deal. And everybody wants to get butthurt about everything now because, like, apparently – see, I sound bad when I say stuff like that. But you can't you can't blame people for how the mentality of how things were when we were growing up. Right, and it's like, well, you if – you can't take you, values. You can't take values that are apparent in society now and place them on things that happened a long time ago. Because when we were growing up, there was things that were more accepted, and I'm not saying it's right. Right. I'm saying there's things that were more accepted, and no one said anything, and it was okay to a degree. Right, and it, it's. You know, I agree with you. It's like if they had, if you had a problem with it back then, and you didn't say anything because you were worried about your career. Right. Then it, it makes you sound a little bit iffy, and... or even even more so if you're looking at it in hindsight, and you had laughed it off then and thought it was funny, but now you don't think it's funny because of Me Too. Yeah, that, one... you can't do that, and it, you know it's 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 one of those things where like you're damaging someone else's reputation because you're trying to chime in on a popular meme or something. It's like, come on. What... <laughs> I'm only bringing this up because I'm saying this because of context and it's what we're talking about. And as much as I, I'm not going to name names. I'm not. Uh, I know you're part of the story. A few other people are part of the story, but I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to pull somebody what somebody's been doing recently. And again, you know part of that story. Oh, but when I was, yeah. But when I was dating my ex uh, with her background, uh, because uh, to be somewhat vague and neutral in regards to this, she. She had and claimed that she was part of sexual abuse and so forth and so on. And one of the things I told her, just in case things got serious, sometimes during the moment, don't and stop when said together could make things go longer. Instead of me stopping, I might just continue. Let's create a safe word. That way you could say it. I know you want it to stop and end. Right. That way, it's a way out for you. Right. And at that point, um, and I'm using that to recommendation nowadays. If you don't want to create a safe word with your partner, that way, if they don't say it, it's kind of also on them as well as a, a little bit because you created that agreement that if it you have whatever that safe word is, where like if it's zucchini, they don't say zucchini. And they come out later saying, "Hey, I, I, hey, we had a safe word, right? Yeah, you know, it's like then, I, yeah, it's come again. It's coming out wrong on my side, but it's it's like, wait a minute, you didn't. We had a safe word. You didn't say that safe word. Right. So part of this blame is also on you. Yeah. Well, see, that, that's the thing. It's like a lot of this is like alleging that it's all guys' fault too. I mean, I've been put into positions like where you know a woman was." could be construed as taking advantage of me you know and or you know taking advantage of a situation with me and, and it's like you know <clears throat> did i say anything no because at the time it was whatever but it, it's one of those things where it's like it, it's it seems all very one-sided and it's targeted at people you know in power and people that want money and it, it's just it, it's it's weird it's 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 a it's a and weird thing, situation. Yeah, the thing with Stan Lee, I don't believe it for a second. I don't I don't think that it's it's real. The thing with Aziz Ansari, I think he was just on a date. I mean, again, you'll have to read the article, but from the details, like they had flirted the week before on the telephone. You know, so like, I think there was expectations there going into yeah, the, the date. Now. You shouldn't always expect something to happen because, you know, when you meet somebody, if the chemistry is just not there in person, you know, you can you could chalk it up to like, well, it was a good date or it was a bad date. And, you know, it's, it's an experience. I'll just go home. Well, what happened? You know, she goes home with him after the date. So, uh, 
you know, balls in her court, she was calling the shot. She could have either, like, went home or she could have stayed. Yeah, or, or at the least, you know, like you said, the minimum, go home, uh, wish him a good night, you know, go home. Or one step further, kissed him good night and said, I'm yeah. going home. You know, call an Uber, it's, it's call time, Lyft. And... It's time for us to act like adults, like, you know, especially women, you know, you are an adult. You can leave a situation if you want to. If if somebody's putting you in a position to where you know it's it's either do this or it's your career, well, you got to make a decision. You know, <laughs> and it sucks. I I don't like it any more than like you know anyone else. But like, if you don't want to be put in that position and that person's wrong, then you need to say no, and you need to walk away and tell everybody that that guy is a scumbag. He puts you in this position, and it's going to harm your career. Right. You know, for you to sit there and do the things that they want them to do, I mean, what 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 more can I say? Yes, you're a victim, but you're also a volunteer. And it's right. like, it doesn't, it doesn't make it any more, you know, it doesn't make it any less wrong uh, on, the, on the guy, you know, the guy or, you know, whoever the abuser's part is. But, like, when you participate – just because you want money or you want fame, you know, you're, you're still, you're still a part of this, <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, like I said, I, I don't want to sit here cause you know, people will say, Oh, you're a victim blamer, but I, I I'm yeah. sorry. That, that be the case. If you want, we could move on to possibly uh bigger, brighter and possibly more annoying things. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, within the past couple of days, ooh, email. Nope. Um, uh, just Twitter saying that, uh, oh, different stuff. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't what I expected. It was just like, uh, you know how you get those emails from Twitter saying so-and-so tweeted, and it was like, oh. what? Yeah, one of the e- uh, emails I got was uh, that was from Twitter in reference to the show's accounts. like, also got them tweeted, and it was like under that was a few people I was uh, following, one of which is a – uh, YouTuber I've been kind of enjoying. His name's Mo Sarji. Uh, again, urban exploring and haunted stuff. Oh, no. Uh, uh, it's just a fun watch. He's an, He comes off as a cool guy. But it said, uh, awesome con underneath it. And it's like, we're proud to. And it has Mo Sarji and a few other. I'm like, wait a minute. Mo Sarji's going to be at awesome con? That's cool. I'll try to get an interview. You know, <laughs> it was just like, wait a minute. No, no. It's just <laughs> saying that, fuck you, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> it was just one of those, like, Emails and it's like, oh fuck you, god damn it! it but uh, I'll, I'll sit there and be like, wait, what, what, what? Oh, yeah, right. right. So, okay. <laughs> uh, to kind of move on a little bit, I know uh, uh, one news that just happened, maybe uh, I don't know, a couple of days ago. Uh, Dan Slott is leaving Amazing Spider-Man and will write for Iron Iron Man. Yay, and, boo, uh, yay. yay, boo, yay, boo. <laughs> uh, it was just, I think. With so many people, I know I was probably in that category. I know when uh, I could probably name one or two people uh, that could, when they s- probably saw this type of post, they would have went, oh, thank God, he's leaving, motherfucking amazing Spider-Man. And, oh, shit, he's now moving over to Iron Man. Motherfucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Riri, he, he, you mean Riri in, the, in the science. <laughs> right. Uh, well, well, oh. oh. But uh, it's like he drove Amazing Spider-Man into the ground, according to some people. Uh, And depending on who you listen to, that's including diversity. I'm not – diversity in comics is a a decent channel with news and how he presents things. And he is so (laughs) – but, you know, it's just – you know, Dan Slott's like, oh, good rinse, a bad run. Oh, fuck. Wait a minute. Iron Man's probably already in the hole. So, like, <laughs> like his cringes are real. And, like, <laughs> it makes me laugh every time he's, he gets cringy. <laughs> like, like, especially when he gets so cringy, he rips up the comic and throws it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting on a day that uh, somebody, yeah, like somebody's going to message uh, Dan Slott. Oh, did you hear what the Long Coat Mafia podcast said about you guys? Oh, yeah. I'm, okay. And I do a random check, and all of a sudden, you have been blocked by Dan Slott. I would come yeah, on the next week's on. episode and go like, <laughs> yes, we were blocked by Dan motherfucking Slott. Oh, yeah. yeah if it hadn't <laughs> happened already, I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, Ugh. that uh, that's 
that little bit of uh, news. It's like, oh, dear God, thank God I'm not... Re- I tried to read one of... Uh, uh, the library had one of his graphic novels from Amazing Spider-Man, his run, yeah. and I just couldn't read it. I could not. I, I just, you know, the fuck. I, yeah. It wasn't like... It, it wasn't like coming into the middle of JMS's run of Spider-Man that you could easily r- latch on and gain, hit the ground running. It's like, this is just a pile of confusing shit. Yeah. No wonder people hate this guy as a writer. And yeah, I look for the days of when I used to read uh, Amazing Spider-Man back in the day. Like, you know, when, when uh, what was it? Um, oh, what was his name? Bagley. Was yeah. The artwork and, like, you know, you had all... Or even uh, Ramita, when Ramita was doing it. And, um... You know? Did we talk about... I think we might have talked about uh, C.B. Uh, Kowalski t- uh, coming in as uh, editor-in-chief. I don't know if we did or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. We talked a little bit about it. Okay. Um, uh, it's been a while, folks. It's been a while. Apparently, he was still... According This is according to Diversity in Comics. I was listening the other day. He was actually on uh, Ethan Van Skyver's podcast, and they did, like, a dual podcast i know oh my god uh <laughs> but i think he said cb sabolsky was still in asia like and is just now getting over here um so i forget but something i, I don't know it, it, at any rate i think you know a, it's going to clean up a lot of the problems that have been there and the blaming of the <laughs> of the fans for not reading the horrible books and like shoving of like things down our throats and <laughs> I know I know uh, uh, diversity in comics I, I was watching uh, I think his late one of his latest today mm-hmm. uh, I think he's got that conspiracy theory is like they're trying Marvel right now is trying to jack up uh, certain book numbers to make sure like oh he's doing good look at this yeah. he's doing good um, and that whole aspect of things that guy, um, I'd like to get that guy on the show just cause like he seems like a really interesting dude, and like, you know, he he's doing his own thing. He's got a, his own books out. You know, they're right. Okay. Like his artwork's okay. You know, it's I, like as critical as he is of other people's. Like, I'm kind of like, eh, yours is all right. But uh, it, I just it, like the the amount of people and the amount of hate towards him is just unbelievable. Like. Part part of the reason I watch that whole channel, I love his reviews, but but the thing is, uh, from what I've seen of him, he, in regard to his work, he's like, yeah, I got work out, you know, buy my stuff, yeah. but he's not like going around going, I am the greatest, I am the best, I am the good. He's like, I he got does, stuff out too. As, he does it as a hobby, right? So and he's just like, I got stuff too. Shut up, you know. <laughs> That's yeah, what he's, he's saying. He's an IT guy, um, right? He was shown on one of his things the other day, like, this one guy was talking all kinds of shit on him, and he looked up his name and on, on uh, Amazon and found all his books and everything that he's written, and he looks up the guy who was talking shit's name, nothing comes up except, like, some, like, butt massager or something. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one. <laughs> I was laughing my ass. Just the way he says stuff, he's such a smartass. It was so funny the other night. Ethan Van Skyver was kind of paying him this big compliment, and, like, it went on for, like, 60 seconds or so. <laughs> and then yeah, he basically he was just like why didn't the like nose on your avatar have a nostril <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's so I don't know he's he's such a funny dude like he's such an ass but at the same time he makes perfect sense because like all the stuff that he complains about is what everybody is basically saying right now and of course like the people who are involved in these stories they don't like the, the negative press they don't like it because they're putting out subpar work and somebody called them out on it, you know? Right. And instead of actually like stepping up and saying like, you know, well, you know, we, we stand by our work. They're just blocking people and calling people Nazis and stuff like that. It's crazy. It's like, you know, if you believe in what you're doing, you'll do it without, you know, freaking out on the people who complain. You'll just do it, you know? And if somebody has something to say about it, like, you know, a critique, you know, you'll take it to heart and you'll say, well, maybe I can do this better. But they're, <laughs> the people he's talking about, like, a lot of them shouldn't be where they're at. Like, I, I do agree with that. Like, a lot of the, the artists that he talks about and the writers that he talks about, like, they they really don't belong in professional comics. Like, there's right. people that are way more talented and way more qualified 
to be at Marvel than these people who basically got jobs because of, you know, one reason or the other that has, has, you know, has nothing to do with being good at what they do. Right. And it's like, oh, it's like from what I think diversity and common said, oh, we need someone who might be, you know, African-American. Oh, this person writes stuff or uh, writes novels uh, and is African-American. Let's bring them in to write comics that they have no idea about the character or the comic industry. Right, right, right. And but yeah, it's not good. <laughs> right. Um, kind of also speaking about before we kind of move on to one of the bigger co- topics I want to speak to you about. Mm-hmm. One's a little bit interesting and uh, goes into what we have plans later on. But um, it's this is kind of a review. I don't know if you've seen it yet. No, I doubt it because it was only on the CW app and all that. Uh, um, I know what you're saying. The Black Lightning premiered. Yeah, yeah I heard at, good things about it, though. And it is pretty good, but um, they're doing all things up, but it comes off as, I want to see this in a positive way. It, it is a very positive thing. It mm-hmm. is, uh, for those of you who don't really know about the comic history or comic book history, is that uh, way back in the day, uh, when Marvel was like King of the Hill, Marvel and DC were the top two. They were the biggest competitors ever, and they were putting out uh, epic shit left and right. Uh, and Marvel was the industry leader, leader in a good way. Uh, what would happen was they would have a uh, cover come out with uh, Spider Man on it, and DC was like, oh, the cover, is, this issue is doing well because it's got red on it. And they change it or they like, oh, DC has somebody who could fly and shoot ice out of their fingers. And it was that type of back and forth um, during that time. And that's what made both epic and both uh, stepping up each other's game. Now, what Black Lightning to me felt like was uh, the CW's answer to Luke Cage. Mm. Um, but in a um, uh, network TV type of feel, which means where Netflix has that hard edge to it, yeah. and they could they could curse, they could you know um, show topless women if they want to. Uh, it didn't happen in Luke Cage, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But uh, with this, is their network equi- DC or CW's network equivalent of that? Uh, And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like, oh, uh, Luke Cage is doing well on Netflix and it's getting a season two. We need something to answer to that in a something similar way. And they used Black Lightning, and which they they did well. I'm I'm saying it's worthy of a watch. It's worthy to um, to follow. I want to see follow on a weekly basis through the CW app to see how they're taking this um, because they're doing everything right um, so far. But it comes off a little Luke Cagey, meaning it it has that similar feel. But it's in a good way. It's in an all-positive way. Um, I've been hearing that uh, this is not going to be tied into uh, the Arrowverse in any way, meaning it's more like how Supergirl is. Right. Uh, that it's not directly tied to Arrowverse, but they, I guess they want to see before, with at least season, season one, to see how it's doing overall in ratings before they want to do any crossovers in any way, shape, or form with the Arrowverse. And I think, um, I don't know if, um, because I haven't heard anything recently in regards to any renew- renewals for Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow. So there's no way of knowing. I heard Supergirl was in trouble. Uh, yeah, uh, I think what again, what doomed them is that that whole they were shoving a lot of stuff down the throat that the fans didn't like, right. uh, or they didn't want. They wanted Supergirl in action. Uh, this, you know, her uh, kind of like a Wonder Woman, you know, strong woman kicking ass, and they got mm, different. You know. Yeah. Like, they picked up a box of uh, Captain Crunch and got cornflakes. You know, that that's what they were getting for the first couple of episodes. So they dug themselves in a hole in regards to that. And now it's going to be, you know, with all those shows halfway down in the ratings, the first few episodes, it's a tough hole to come out at. Uh, 
which is uh, hopefully by the end of March, early April. I'm hoping by the end of March, uh, I hear uh, who's getting renewed for next season. Uh, I have to keep my ear to the ground because, which leads us to our next topic. Well, I was going to say real quick before we get on to the next topic. Go ahead. I think people are getting sick of superheroes. At least on TV? At least everywhere. Like, I, I, I don't see... I don't see the reactions like like they have been for a lot of stuff. Um, you know, with with these shows being in trouble, I think it's just too much. Everything is superheroes. Like, there's been like this explosion for the last I don't know what would you say eight nine years now. Yeah, and I think people are just kind of getting like a little played out on it. You know what I mean? Like they're looking for something new. They're looking for something different. Um. There is some there's some hope with a lot of stuff. Like there's a there's a series that Netflix is going to be coming out with, um, which seems really interesting. It's about like a mom, like a single mom, trying to raise a kid with superpowers. But it's like from the it's from the position of like just a mom and a like a like a kid, not not so much like he's going to be saving the day at all, but just a mom trying to deal with like. You know, a, a typical seven-year-old, but he's got superpowers too. So, like, when he's bad, like <laughs> he basically can do really weird shit. You know, and it's that kind of like Superman before uh, he became Superboy, so to speak. You know, how would the Kents yeah. deal with the uh, Superman before he's uh, old enough to be Superboy? Yeah, I mean, or that kinda, type of ordeal. He's coming into his powers and stuff, and she has to be like. Not only teach him how to be a, a, a like a man, teach him how to be a little boy, but she's also got to like kind of corral, you know, his suit because it shows like guys in black and sunglasses following him around and coming to their house and you know the little kid he can like when he gets mad he can like basically destroy a room, you know stuff like that. So it's uh it, it seems like an interesting take on something. So <clears throat> right, a, a different to, perspective. Yeah, I'd like to see more stuff like that from a different perspective. Like, I think like if they really wanted to do, uh, you know, some series. What was the series? Man, I used to read it all the time, and I can't think of what it was called now. The one where it was the like the gang of regular dudes that hated superheroes because they had got too cocky, and so they just beat the crap out of them. Oh, uh, boys! Boys, somebody, yeah. I think somebody should pick up boys. You know, just for a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, th- I think it was called Boys because it, it yeah. had that character. It was based on uh, what's his name that was like Chekhov, not Chekhov, uh, uh, Scotty in the new Star Trek. It was right. ba- one of the characters was based on him and, yeah. or his likeness and all that shit. Yeah. It was just like it was such a cool series because it was just a bunch of badass dudes that went around beating up superheroes. <laughs> so, listeners, <laughs> listeners, if if we're right or wrong, email us at the show at longcoatmafia at gmail dot com. Tell us whether what it actually is if we are wrong. Yeah. So, all right. Um, we can move on. Sorry. Uh, to, to move on to our kind of moving on to our next comic uh, topic, not comic, but uh, it's kind of comic related uh, in some way. Uh, this past as of this. Uh, recording this past week, we put in for our press pass to Awesome Con, but we don't, we won't know whether or not we got our press pass until when? It's February sixth. We gotta wait three more fucking weeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. oh God! And they're trying to kill me. <laughs> They are literally trying to kill me. Why are they trying to kill me, Oz and Kai? What's your odds? Why? What do you think? You think you're gonna get it? Uh, I'm hoping I get it. Uh, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about now. I want this goddamn press pass. I want to prove my mousy worth to you by taking over the world. Uh, um, <laughs> um, so who, the reason why I say that. Get um. There are there are quite a few people I have targets on because I want fucking interviews by these these people mm-hmm. uh, in order in in motherfucking order because I have their guest list pulled up of um, who they have so far and in order that I want appearing on their guest list Ben motherfucking Savage oh yeah definitely oh I want an interview with him so goddamn bad um, 
Why shits and giggles? Shits and giggles. Boy meets world. Little monsters. Girl meets world. Uh, whole mess of stuff. Uh, uh, the wizard. It, it, the wi- No, he wasn't in that. Yes, he was. That, no, he wasn't. What? I thought he was. His brother was. Yeah, Fred I mean, was. Fred Savage. He, he, but but his no. Do? I thought the same thing too. He's not. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no, I'm thinking of little monsters because I'm thinking of like, because he was like he was was he he was the one that got abducted. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. My bad. Right. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. Wait. Hold on. Who was the little brother in the wizard? It wasn't him. No. It, it was, was somebody else. Oh, okay. And so I'll bring it up. Like, I'll bring it up. Because remember, he I'll, he like hid in the dinosaur. Yeah, 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 and I was th- that's who I was thinking of. I was thinking it was. I'll, I'll bring I'll break that up. It's like how many times were you over the past life confused with the the actor from Wizard? <laughs> yeah, the Wizard. Oh, uh, let's see. Going down, going down, 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 down. Let's see here. I want to interview Dave Batista. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, with his kind of working his acting career and the success of uh, Guardians, um, and him. Because I haven't heard too much in reference to... I know there was rumors in regards to him wanting to come back to the WWE. So, that might uh, be a possible I question. It doesn't, because the last time it was disastrous. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Down, down, down. Uh, possible uh, Joe Keery. He's from uh, Stranger Things. So, that's a possible. Who? Joe Keery. What, what did he play? Um... Uh, in the, the second season, he was like the guy is like, he was the character that told the two youngest like, "Hey, why is the, my only help this girl, the strange girl?" I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he was he was the jock. He was the jock. The jock. He was the uh, the pretty boy jock that uh, it was it came off like a dick in the first season. Now he was like the hero. Oh, the one that was hanging out with the. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay, yeah. I didn't know his I didn't know his name. Right. Okay, cool. Um and right immediately after that is uh that I wanna interview is John Barrowman. Um he was in uh he played uh what's his name what's your name's dad in Arrow? You know who I'm talking about. I watch Arrow. Um, but you'd probably recognize the face. He's been in Doctor Who, Arrow, and uh, he was one of the bad guys. In D- yeah. Um, I got a few questions in regards to him. You know, it, that could be cool. Um, after that, Karen Gillen. Okay. Uh, I want to talk to her about fucking uh, uh, Jumanji in reference because, again, I think the fucking fight... Uh, choreographers fucked up her her role big time in regards to her fight scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it because again, folks, you can't it, you can't have a, a a cheesy song like "Life Is a Highway" and do a fight scene to it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it's that type of song. Every time she had a fight scene, because her special one of her special skills was dance fighting. This song, like uh-huh. Life is a Highway, would come on, uh-huh. or a similar beat would come on, and she starts fighting. Oh, no. I'm like, they couldn't get the re- a remix for Kung Fu Fighting, at least? Now, Karen I Gillen, she, I, she was also, she was in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk to her about that. Nebula? Yeah. Okay. Um, going down the list. Down the list. Uh... My, uh, this was just. This is where they're starting to kill me. Michael Rosenbaum, okay. the original. Uh, he was Lex in um, Smallville, right? right, right. And plus, he's he's done a lot of voice work, especially uh, uh, Flash and DCU. Mm-hmm. So uh, get him talking about b- his voice acting career and yeah. uh, his days of being Flash and how he sees the DC universe coming out. There, there could be a couple in- interesting questions coming out of it. Yeah. Um, uh, possible Michael Rooker. That'd be awesome. Uh, like I said, these are people I'm gunning for. Uh, th- with his, uh, especially, uh, uh, who is it, James Gunn? Yeah. Uh, who's in charge of uh, Guardian, saying they will not bring back uh, Michael Rooker, but uh, he's. I think he's no longer in charge of Guardians anymore after, or he's not front-running it, so there could be a possibility of Michael Rooker returning to his role. Um don't quote me on that. Are you going to offer him a chocolate pretzel? 
Oh, I, I'll, I should. <laughs> uh, I should pay for a photo op just to hand him a bag. <laughs> uh, um, and after that, I want to. Um, the next two is uh, first off is Stephen Amell, who plays uh, Oliver Quinn in um, The Arrow. Yeah. So uh, I think that would be a great interview and an interesting interview, especially if there is a next season of The Arrow uh, to see where his character is going uh, and what he has planned. Especially, I want to talk to him about his little stint on uh, um, the, uh, even though it was for charity. Um, his stint on American Ninja Warrior. Oh, what did he do? awesome. He did so good. Oh, yeah, because he wanted to, you could tell he wanted to go all the way. Right. And they gave him the high sign saying, no, you got to cut it. Uh, I want to talk to him about that. Um, so good. <laughs> uh, because he was having so much motherfucking fun. You you know he was. Oh, yeah. Um, and shocked. again. I, I, I knew he was athletic, but I really didn't know how athletic he was. Because I'd seen him on wrestling. And like when he did yeah. that little stint with uh, uh, Cody Rhodes a couple of years ago, like <clears throat> you know, you, you could see it then too. But I, I didn't think he was like as you know to do Ninja Warrior. That's that's a whole nother level. Like yeah, again, I could talk to him about you know uh, if the WWE uh, brought him back into as another storyline or something like that. Yeah. What his thoughts and you know doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um. And the next person is. Uh, again, this is where they want to fucking kill me. Uh, Tom Welling. Oh, yeah. Uh, the original Clark Kent from Sm- I won't say the original. Just- uh, Clark Kent from <laughs> Smallville. But he's working on Lucifer right now. Right. And his character is interesting. You know, it's it's someone new. Uh, again, talk about DC if he's willing to talk about his And besides this new character, if he's going to be on next season of Lucifer. Um, or or is he, this was a one-time thing. Uh, you know, it, it could be an interesting conversation, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, especially I could talk to him about the hate that he might have been receiving in regards to um, fans and how he could have possibly destroyed Smallville and the possibility of seeing Superman in a lot of the, even though we see it in Supergirl a little bit, but in the mainstream uh, Arrowverse, because I think he's gotten a lot of hate. And uh, I'm sad to say I'm probably one of those motherfuckers too. Uh-huh. But for the sake of interview, uh, for the sake of interview, it would be a. I think it would be a good interview. Um, and the last person I want to interview again, he's he's a uh, boy meets world alum and a girl meets world alum, Will Friedel, but he's voice acted in a lot of shit. Right. Uh, and I want again someone to talk about his uh, voice acting career because he. He voiced Lionel in the reboot of uh, Thundercats, and he did Batman Beyond. So there's, you know, there's questions that I what can come up Batman with. What Batman Beyond? Uh, he was um, uh, the lead. He was in Harry? essence, the, yeah. Really? Yeah, he was in essence uh, Batman Beyond. He was the new Batman. He was uh, oh, the alter really? ego. Yeah. Wow. I met Batman a, Beyond. Uh, that, that's probably of the Batman animated series. That's probably my favorite. Like, I, I of course love the the old, like you know, the old Batman the animated series. Like, that's a great series. But I absolutely adore Batman Beyond. Yeah, and it's it's just something to talk about, you know, and what he's been doing. What you know, um, like yes, uh, Terry. He's, just clicking on his link, he was like, uh, uh, as Boy Meets World drew to a close, he, uh, Will uh, went into voice acting, taking up the mat- mantle of Batman for a new generation, now iconic role of Terry McGinnis, slash Batman and Batman Beyond, uh, Blue Beetle, uh, I guess he played uh, Blue Beetle and Batman Brave and the Bold, uh, Nightwing and Batman Unlimited, Animal Instincts and Batman Unlimited, Monster Mayhem and Deadpool in Ultimate Spider-Man. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you'll always be the beloved Ron Stoppable sidekick to... Oh, you, uh, he voiced uh, Ron Stoppable in Kim Possible and also Lionel in the reboot of Thundercats. Plus, uh, I guess he voiced Bumblebee in Transformers Prime and... Um, 
prime beast hunters too. Um, so uh, it's just stuff to that I could easily uh, talk about. And yeah, I want to. And by the way, if we are denied and they tell us, "Oh, you're not cool enough for me, for us," there will be a rant. <laughs> there will be a probably a, a full episode dedicated to a rant. <laughs> It'll just be angry rant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't see. I don't know why they would. What did you submit? Um, for uh, the episodes, I because it wasn't. Oh, you're limited to three months. I know when back in 2016 when I tried, yeah. they it was only limited to like the past two or three months, right? And. At that point, I couldn't touch our October stuff, which was our our first co- con coverage. Oh, okay. And it was like, I think I remember telling you, it's like, I couldn't touch that. They only wanted the past three months. Yeah. And this time around, I was like, oh, uh, provide us with, you know, just three links with uh, uh, stuff you've done if you've covered conventions. And, of mm-hmm. course, I, um, one of which was our, this was long before the, the reveal of Stephen Amell. Um, was the David Nickel uh, interview with the our con review attached to that uh-huh. uh, because it shows an interview and con review. Um, I our Otacon review because it's con coverage, right? And it provides context. Um, and uh, again, it was another uh, interview that we did. I did with uh, uh, Michelle Knotts, that one. Okay. And it was just those those three. It was like a mix that was recent. one, uh, Two that were, in essence, recent, and one that was uh, way back. And that just you know proves that we had this coverage and uh, who we are and that we've been hitting, uh, on, for the exception of last week, uh, which is up to about maybe 15 or 16, uh, we've been hitting, on average, uh, 20, 20, 25 on up, and which is great for us. Uh, I'm happy to t- show our numbers, but it that might be the only thing hurting us. But one of the things I mentioned was that we've, uh, in regards to our following, it's growing. And in regards to our Podbean, you know, account, it's like we're we're followed by over 750. Uh, pe- at that time, 750 people. Now it's like over seven eighty in a week's time. Right, that's not bad. We grow. We we've grown over thirty <laughs> followers on Podbean, um, but it, it just shows them that you know we, we're growing. We're on our way up and up, and we're not some two bit motherfuckers, you know, <laughs> from you know from West Virginia, which we're not. You know, it's that we have. Hopefully, we'll get at least seven people out of the uh, lineup that they have so far. Yeah. Um, which, if we do, I do a review, that's, again, that's eight episodes mm-hmm. right then and there. That's two months of episodes, plus, if anything, two hostfuls uh, during that time. That's two and a half months worth of content yep. that I don't have to touch. And, uh, folks, if we make it through January, we'll be hitting ten months. Oh, my God. Uh, without having to t- uh, without having to touch a, a, a classic episode. Uh, as much as you guys probably like that, uh, I don't like using it because I think it's a cop-out on my end. But that's just me. Uh, <laughs> so, the ten months. Wow. Ten months. Going on ten months. That's good. Um... um but again, I want to see awesome. If uh, it, if I do it, uh, if I get the press pass, I'm going to go all three days. I'm booking the hotel. I'm reserving a room uh, for the three days. Uh, the I think the only major problem that they're going to have this year is that uh, I didn't realize it until uh, a few weeks ago too. Is that it falls on Easter weekend? Oh yeah. Uh, and I have to take that in mind because it's some. It can affect a con. Uh, a religious holiday can affect a con and cannot. Uh, I have to take that in mind because who wants to go see uh, a bunch of people? You know, yeah, at a show. You know, the last time I went to a convention at a 
during Easter weekend was the one that fucking failed. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm not. That's an interesting thing that you say that because if it's during Easter weekend and they got all these like celebrities, like right, how many cancellations do you think they're going to have? I don't know. That's why I want to see, and I want to take it into uh, uh, a factor because you have uh, some of these are main. Uh, high-profile guests because you have – I'm not knocking, you know, who they have in any way, shape, or form. Mm. It's – again, you have these people signed on for this and shows are winding down, which uh, is probably what, how they managed to get Steven in, in on it. But um, I want to see – I want to – you know, this will be an interesting thing to see and especially being there all three days. All three days, and it, I'll be getting video footage while there um, of all three days, and you'll probably – my new favorite word during those three days instead of allegedly, uh, it would be it's Easter weekend. This is Good Friday. This is Good Friday. This is – it's as past experiences, this is – you know, might be more or less traffic than in previous years that I've been at Awesome Con. Uh, and especially uh, Sat- Saturday and Sunday will be my first two days there um, on a Saturday and Sunday. So it would be like, well, it's hard for me to judge previous years because uh, that's my first Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So, uh, All right, question. <clears throat> and, you know, coming from somebody that typically if I do go to a con, I go to uh, Baltimore Comic Con um, or one of the smaller ones. Um with Awesome Con, is is it more oriented towards guests and autographs, or is it more oriented towards comics and a sales floor? Um, it's more uh, Awesome Con is more of a pop culture show, right. which means it's uh, more gunned towards uh, like I want to say, like Wizard World, it's more gunned towards the the celebrities okay. than uh, even though they have comic uh, creators or say comic artists and writers there. Um, I'm sure most of which hate diversity in comics, but um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure who they are. But uh, either way, uh, I'm there to get the bigger bigger names, so to speak, uh, in regards to everything, but it's more geared towards the celebrities than anything else, okay. uh, meaning that, again, this is in, you and I have both been in the D.C. Uh, convention center. Yeah. It's, uh, um, remember that uh, car show we went to? Yeah. Uh, y- yeah, it's in that particular uh, uh, convention hall. Okay. And... The last year I went back in 2016, uh, that hall uh, was taken up, and the back half was extremely spaced out with the celebrities. You just felt, you know, where the f- front part of the convention, you felt, okay, this feels like a convention where it's a lot of people uh, moving around. You felt like you're in a convention, but as soon as you hit that celebrity sec- section, it was like, okay, where did everybody go? Right. Um. But well, reason, whether or not reason I ask is because when I go to conventions, and this is just me, um, I don't really gun for celebrities that much. I'm yeah, I'm not starstruck like a lot of people are. I mainly go for Artist Alley, and I mainly go for like like, like just stuff. I like looking at stuff and back issues and create it's like creative properties and stuff that just seeing what people are up to kind of thing. I'm not really there for that. So would that be a good con for me to, to try and go to for a day or would it be like, would I be disappointed? Uh, it could be an interesting con to go for a day. Yeah. Uh, yet personally for you, uh, for you, uh, Baltimore might be more, yeah. uh, along your gear set, yeah. but uh, it has a lot of, uh, when I went and actually was looking around, there's a lot of stuff at Awesome Con that would probably pique your interest as well, um, that it's one of those instances where I was like, wow, there's actually a lot more that, you know, when I was walking around, it's like, 
wow, there's a lot more in the vendor area than I expected. And it was one of those instances where there was, I'm hoping they're back if I go, I want to get one. Uh, it was a little bit expensive, but um, they, they there was a guy selling, it was a show exclusive, um, metal uh, goblets and uh, steins oh, okay. type of things. But because it's uh, a convention floor, they they can't sell beer. Um, <laughs> but uh, they were selling it. They, they were selling beer, but it was like root beer oh, okay. uh, to drink. But they were like 25 bucks a pop. But the next day, each day, you could come in for like a free refill or something like that. Oh, yeah. So at least uh, – when you bought it the first day, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Uh, you, you paid the twenty five or whatever it was for the cup. You got it, it filled. Like you, if you were going to Seven Eleven, you picked up the big uh, cups yeah. or sheets, the big insulated cups. You paid like five bucks for that. You got a free fill. Mm. Uh, that's what happened. But the next time after that, you would pay like uh, three or four dollars for whatever the drink was, right, right. and it got filled. But the next day, your first one was free, but each time you wanted to refill, it was like maybe three or four dollars. Oh, okay. Each additional day. But, um, well, just, I'm hoping... Reason, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about going, because I've never been to Awesome Con. I've, part of me, like, doesn't want to go, because I've heard nothing but bad stuff. <laughs> Mainly from me, that's why, well, um, No, not just from you, from a lot of people. From a lot of people that, like, are into the, going to the things, things and, like, they just don't like the feel of it. Like it's got an icky feel to it. Is what they said. Um, that that's why I'm hoping that uh, it's awesome, Con. If you're listening to this, mm -hmm. change our mind. Change my mind, like uh, Otacon did. Mm -hmm. Change my mind uh, because a lot of the issues that we've, at least I've seen in the past, uh, is that it's too corporate. They, it's too media driven. It's too like stiff. There's not a lot of it's, fun there. It's, That's what I've. Heard. It's it's not it's not just I won't say that is that again when I went in 2016 they were te the people in charge. I'm not talking the volunteers. The people in charge were telling people on Friday, the only day I could be there on Friday. They were in line. They had two lines: the VIP line and the regular ticket holders. They were telling the people that were in the VIP line. Yeah, you get to go in an hour early. Right. And they were saying afterwards, oh, no, 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 no. You uh, you got to go. You can get in with the rest of us. The rest of everybody else, you're just VIP on Friday. Uh, but why were you telling them, even though on the tickets and their website were saying, no, you, you go on regular time like everybody else. Uh, but why were you telling these people on the last minute, they could go in an hour early. These were your higher ups, mm -hmm. your people. Even I think one of their top people were saying, "Yeah, you could go in an hour early. You're VIP." But you know, and that's why I was telling. I think last year I um, I was telling you when we were doing convention stuff that hey, uh, Baltimore was allowing their VIPs an hour early on Friday mm -hmm. uh, and Saturday and Sunday uh, and all this, that, and the other thing. Um, and Wizard World tends to do that. And why are you trying to be this goofball against the norm? Um, granted, it could have something to do with the convention center, but it, it seems a little odd. Um, but uh, I'll say this: learning from Os I'm giving us Os uh, not Osmocon Otacon major props. I understand now why a lot of celebrities are late getting to their tables. Um, because I've had issues with that in the past. Like, why does the con start at, like, 12 noon and the the celebrities are not there at 12 noon? Why are they showing up at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock or later? Uh, it's because there's fucktards like myself going for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now, I understand that now. You know, it's it's one complaint is down the tubes you know it's like i i've learned that i understand that now it's it it's a difference between you know going to a big show like otacon and awesome con or wizard world or baltimore and matt show you know it's like i could go up to anybody i want and get an interview uh but there's a a little bit of a difference um in reference to how they're all operated but the, it's a lot of it is again in the past uh AwesomeCon has been known to fuck shit up, uh, 
case in point. Last year, I didn't hear anything about uh, anything being fucked up, but uh, I know the year before, in 2016, they they blatantly lied, oh. and uh, because they had Peter Capaldi and one other person there uh, scheduled just for Sunday, and they put out, I remember that they put out that, oh, uh, it, they're, they're only on Sunday because of... Uh, now this kind of leads into our next topic. Uh, they, they said, "Oh, they're 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 filming. That's why they're, they're filming." Little did they know, right? Mm-hmm. That if, this is not 1993. <laughs> this is not 1989. Internet this access. is <laughs> yeah, 24-hour high-speed motherfucking access. <laughs> All you had to do was if you followed Peter Capaldi or the other person from Doctor Who. Uh, that was, in essence, playing his companion at the time. Uh, all you had to do was follow them on either Facebook or Twitter and find out that particular wind, uh, weekend, that Friday and Saturday, they were at a convention in Phoenix right. or some, something like that. And the only day was a scheduling thing was that Sunday right. that they could get. And they could have said anything else, but no, they're filming. Uh, due to, they could have said easily said, due to scheduling conflict, they could only make it on Sunday. And they, when they did show up on Sunday, they fucked their own shit because uh, they kept selling tickets for the event, meaning uh, somebody that was high, as high demand for an autograph like Peter Capaldi, oh, yeah. they should have cut it off at maybe, uh, let's take like Bruce Campbell. Uh, only 400, well, only 400 tickets, you know, right now. Right. That way, you know, if yeah. there's too much, yeah. right. Uh, but they kept selling tickets after tickets, after tickets, after tickets, after tickets. And it got way out of hand, way, way out of hand. And they d- pr- practically did not, they kind of took credit for it, but they didn't at that time. I remember. And when I called them out on it, it's like, look, and they're like, oh no no no! We, it's like, dude, there's archives, man. There's archives. Yeah. You're 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 pushing people away, and like, oh, we never said. <laughs> Again, it takes one person. It's like that was when we were. I was still learning the show. It's like, dude, I should have been filming all this shit, you know. And it's like, could have had their top people. Oh, uh, hour early. Oh yeah, yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, um, but. Yeah, I'll I'll be on all aspect. Even though this is a podcast audio program, uh, I'll be doing uh, additional coverage for our YouTube channel uh, that we have and everything else. Um, we'll get into YouTube, more YouTube hijinks in a moment. <laughs> but uh, um, like I said, it kind of leads into our next topic. Uh, that is, I don't know how much you have heard in regards to the whole uh, Kevin Sorbo ordeal. Oh my God! And. Uh, I know Matt weighed in on it. Uh, again, uh, me and Matt have spoken off, um, kind of off air, yeah. uh, in regards to me uh, hitting up more so, uh, trying to hit up Awesome Con instead of uh, his show. I will still promote his show and what he's got up going on uh, in March, just that his show takes place a week prior to Awesome Con. And we just handed out, you know, it's, I told him, it's like, dude, it's, you know, nothing against you. And he's like, yeah, I understand it. You got to go for the big stuff. And it, there, there's no bad blood between me and Matt at all, at all. Oh. Uh, I was still, you know, if he wants me to help promote or anything like that or do another uh, Skype interview with somebody, I'll be more than happy to do it. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, I don't know if you should be listening to this uh, episode as well. Uh, before we go into Kevin Sorbo's ordeal, uh, I did email Amber Dawn's Fox's manager to schedule an interview with Amber. Uh, and just haven't heard anything back from him. Right. Um, so, Amber, if you're listening, bug your fucking manager. Because uh, I do want to interview you. Uh, I do want to talk to you and interview you. It'll be a fun thing. But he didn't get back to me to schedule anything. Uh, so... Um, I think she wants to interview just that uh, her management might think we're too small. Yeah, that's fine. It could be that sort of thing. Um, But 
Uh, nothing. Uh, it's not against uh, Amber, nope. but I don't know how usually, her her management. Yeah, it's usually not the the accurate actors. Uh, it. I think it all depends on how uh, the manager has the management aspect of things has view. Um, so again, Amber, if you're listening, uh, I might even tag her in the show notes or let her know. And just uh, I I did speak. I did reach out to uh, your manager, Amber, uh, or the person in charge of scheduling. Just didn't hear anything back. But if you still want to do the interview, I still want to do the interview. Just bug the people that talk to my people, uh, <coughs> a.k.a. me, uh, to sk- hammer out the details. Uh, <laughs> that I'm putting it politely as possible. Did it come out polite? Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, But uh, the whole Kevin Sorbo thing is that um, this was a uh, the promoter of a New Jersey comic uh, pop culture show um, said that he banned, uh, pretty much he banned Kevin Sorbo due to his friendship with a person by the name of Sean Hentley. Uh, And the guy has stated that uh, the founder uh, and chief promoter said, I turned down Kevin Sorbo for East Coast Comic Con. Uh, He's pal- in, says uh, he's pals with Sean Hantley. I just can't do it now. Sean Hannity, Hannity, or however you pronounce his name. Now, now, despite your views, I know uh, everybody's views about Kevin Sorbo. He he's come out about being you know different viewpoints and on his Facebook and so forth and so on. But he's still recognized as Hercules and from Andromeda um, and plus other roles that he has done. Mm-hmm. But uh, he has come out on Facebook after this article and words about it. He said, I never heard about this person. He never contacted my management about this convention. He never contacted me about this convention. So I have no idea what this person's talking and about. And that's what I wanted to know. That's the one thing I didn't hear. What I thought was really strange was it, it, the person was like basically banning him from the from the convention. And I was like, wait a minute. Did he agree for him to come there and then he heard something or what? No, the guy was just preemptively <laughs> banning him without even talking to him. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right now I'm pulling up uh, Kevin Sorbo's fan page on Facebook to get the um, – says uh, – it was – I think – yeah, uh, no. I know it said uh, one of it, it was uh, – uh, he posted up on his fan page that comic book convention bans Kevin Sorbo over friendship with, uh, with Sean. But there was another one that he posted up. I think he taken down because I don't see it here, or he edited it because it said I don't know anything about this person. I haven't heard anything about this person. Um, again, I'm looking up on his fan page, and it do- oh yeah, right here. Uh, Kevin Sorbo responds to. Let me see this. Pull it up. Uh, let's see here. I'm pulling up. Let's see here. I don't want to come from yada yada. Uh, turn down. To, come on. I thought this uh, was pretty funny. Uh, I laughed. He said, "Wait a minute. Let, let me read this right." Kevin Sorbo doesn't think so. He says, "Could it be the another corner of the entertainment world affected now with political pop- polarization and conservative artists have now." More bias to deal with on top of what they already must handle in Hollywood. Kevin Sorbo doesn't think so. I thought this, the Facebook post was pretty, pretty funny. I laughed. Uh, he said, this is the, fir- this is a first for me. Um, and he said, uh, he continued to me, this is like, what a smart move. I was never even invited to the convention. My agent never went there. I went online, and it's a very small con, so he was, a person's name was trying to drum up interest for his con and himself. I appreciate it, and I applaud his entrepreneurial spirit, especially for a guy who is a socialist. But um, that's a quote from Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> but it was like, I never heard of the guy. You know, it's like, I, no one went there. No one contacted him. What are you saying? No one contacted me, my manager, or my manager. You know, I had to, you know, find out about this from everybody else. You know, it's, what the hell? Um, it, it's, you know, it, something like this, it's like you have somebody, this is what I mean by a 24-hour 
day seven day a week internet society that everybody finds out about everything and can react instantly. And here, whether or not Kevin Sorbo was actually um, uh, contacted, we will never know. No paperwork has come up in regards to uh, uh, this incident, saying that. Well, here's emails, here's text messages uh, from you know Mark uh, Kevin's people uh, to from our people to Kevin's people and vice versa. Uh, for so far, all we know from this is the promoter from the this particular convention said, "Oh, he's banned from here because he's friends with this person." Yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, what? I think even Matt was like, "What?" Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's like, and he's like, well, I think Matt put it best. Like, listen, I've had people at the show uh, that were guests at the show that one, the guest was himself like a Trump supporter and their manager wasn't, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, too, it's like, I'm, I'm going to have people that my my ticket holders want, you know. And it's a pr- the perfect thing for a promoter. I'm saying a promoter to say. Matt said it best. I'm going to have guests show up that my ticket holders want to see. Or I'm going to bring in people I think my ticket holders want to see. Uh, Which is a perfect way to put things. Now, if this did happen, this person saying, oh, he's friends with so-and-so, that's why I've banned him, he'll never show up. Oh, again, that's the wrong thing to say. You could say scheduling, you could say... Even if you want to go uh, a little bit less than that, a little less formal, you could say, well, Kevin is a little bit too high of a cost for appearance fees right now at this time. You know, kind of putting it politely. Yeah. You know, because uh, someone like in this status, like, oh, Kevin Smith might be outside our budget right now. That's why he's not going to uh, be at this time. But we might, at some further point, Uh, have someone similar to his status or larger when we have those funds. It's a way of saying something similar without insulting the man and putting things politely without causing too much drama on both ends. Because saying something like this is that in something down the line, even though Kevin Sorbo laughed it off in a way and probably overall has no... And took it kind of lightly. He's like, hey, I, I applaud him for what he's trying to do, drum up you know, more eyes on his show. But in the long run, it could damage this guy's show. It's like, wait a minute, you're banning people over their possible viewpoint. Uh, we don't want to go to your show because you might ban us for something else. Or uh, you could be – especially if it is a lie. Yeah. It's like, well, you, you're banning – quote, unquote, banning us now – to drum up more business, uh, who are you going to quote unquote ban next for something s- possibly stupid? Yeah. It, it, Therefore, I mean, no one wants. It's, it's, it's a bad idea all over. <laughs> right. It's like you could have somebody else that, like, wait a minute, I don't want to show up at your show now because uh, what you, I might not be friends with Kevin Sorbo, but why do I want to be at your show because you 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 treated someone like so badly. Without actually knowing them. It's one thing to say that, hey, Celebrity X came to our show uh, and just ran up bills and, you know, uh, treated the the ticket holders like shit. Uh, So, therefore, we're we're not having him back or her back at our show ever again. The main thing is it's not the job of a convention to to get political. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the job of a convention – like that's politics. That, has, right. that you know, they shouldn't get involved in stuff like that. that that's just like that's stupid. That, that, that it, it makes me like not want to go to that show. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know what I'm talking about. It's like if if a guest, uh, whomever he or she is, yeah. um, it treats people uh, instead of the interviews like in like hey. We, we scheduled you here for three days. You only showed up for maybe about an hour each day. Mm-hmm. You, the, during that time, you treated each ticket holder that wanted to see you and meet with you like dirt, and they were beneath, beneath you instead of, uh, hey, how the hell are you? Uh, you know what? Tell, then telling the public, 
hey, uh, we're not having, you know, this guest back again because, you know, uh, the way he or she treated our guests and our staff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go into why, but there, uh, just that there's a lot of – she did a, he or she did a lot of bad stuff, so we're not going to, you know, have them back. Uh, that's one thing. And leave it to the fans to kind of distribute the, the, the stories of what actually happened. Right. But there's um, – there's a certain what this, like you said, is you shouldn't be doing. No one should be doing, yeah. um, because their viewpoint could be totally different than when they finally sit down to meet fans. It could be, hey, how the hell are you doing? Who are you? How did you? You know, uh, you know, which one of my roles was your favorite? Well, All right, let's, you I know. would hope that Mr. Sorbo honestly wouldn't be like, so you voted for Trump, right? You know, like the second I sit down, I. I have a feeling he's not going to say that. I have a feeling no. he's going to want to talk about his career. He's going to want to talk about acting. He's going to want to talk about everything probably but politics. Right. You know? That's what he's there to do. He, probably like If a, he was at a political convention or at like, you know, something like a, you know, a rally, <clears throat> okay, that's a different story. But Or if, if he was like, um, let's say – I know it's a rare thing for uh, a celebrity or somebody at a convention to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it. I think it happened to me. Uh, at, it happened to me at Baltimore one day. You know, it, uh, this was uh, many years ago when I, uh, God, even though God rest his soul, I don't want to speak ill of deal, dead, uh, Michael Turner before he passed. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, you know, he kind of snubbed me for an autograph. And I, you know, I, I was going to spend two hundred and some odd dollars at that fucking booth, too. Uh, you know, and I went, "Fuck it!" And I beeline to Billy Tucci's booth, picked up a piece of page off, art off of him, and he was like, "Billy was like, brother, you know, yeah. that kind of like, thank you so much, really friendly." It's like, thank you. even if it was, it was a, a two hundred and fifty dollar piece of artwork I picked off. Yeah off of him at the time and he was so happy that I did so he was like hey if you're going to be packed later maybe we can uh, get something that you know like a sandwich or something like that yeah. you know you know that that at, if that led to a sandwich later at a subway or something yeah and things turned political uh, a, a discussion that's that's different that's after the show right. that's after the show it's not at the show exactly. but uh, but at in this case as well, it's like he was so happy. He's like, great, I'll sign it, you know, sign in it. Uh, or like the whole Rob Liefeld thing, like the year before, or whenever, whenever it was, when you were waiting in line all goddamn day. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, my biggest regret, not to get off topic, my biggest regret about that whole thing is when he said, what do you want me to draw? I should have said a foot. <laughs> I should have said but, a fucking foot. But you, you know what he's talking about? He, he went and was like, when I was talking about the page art that he had for sale, yeah. and he was like, he was telling, you know, he got excited about talking about the page I had in my hand. That's how, you know, that's exactly, you know, what, you know, there's that line. You're telling, you're promoting your shit. That's why you're at the show yeah. for a, a little bit. And uh, especially when I went to see uh, John Cassidy at Baltimore, like two years, like a, two years ago. Uh, and I asked him about that page, you know, how he did the stars, and it 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 sparked some like here's somebody that's asking me about my artwork, you know, how I did something, and he was more than was like, even though he said I'm not here to you know do sketches because of the line, and I told him, dude, I understand. I just want to ask you about a piece of art that you drew that I managed to pick up pick up off a of dealer because I found it damn interesting. I want to know more, and. He was more than happy to talk about it. It wasn't political and something that he knew about and wanted to talk about. How did he do the stars? Uh, he inked it all black and used white paint on a toothbrush. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So, and huh. so it, it, and it, his, it was like, like one of those things that it, his like, eyes like, lit up. Like flick, like flick it, like flick the bristles. Uh, he didn't say. I think he said he tapped the like the brush uh, on his finger, meaning like, like the base underneath the uh, bristles okay. on his. Um, it just said it took him a little bit to remember the page, 
And once he did, he was like, oh, yeah, 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 that this is how I did it. You know, I call, you know, did the circle, I colored it all in. Then I got some white ink and, you know, put it on some tooth, a toothbrush and just kind of tapped my finger over the, the thing to do the stars. That way they were random and di- different sizes. And I thought it was cool. It, it and that, That's a positive experience. That is someone sharing their craft right. with... With, a fan. With a fan. That's what that's what the, it's all about. Not about like right. who your political affiliations are with. Right, right. And it's it's another thing to also talk business with. Uh, what I mean by business is like, hey, what you getting into? Uh, like me talking with like someone like Billy West about the the voice actor strike in re- reference to video games. You know, it, it's that's different because they're involved in it in some way. It's business. You know, it's not political. Right. You're asking, you know, I've been hearing about this. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? It, that's a little bit different. Right. So, that, yeah, that, that's – I don't – for that guy to do that, to drag politics into it, to kind of – in a way, it's it's kind of virtue signaling a little bit. Like, look at me. I'm rejecting Kevin uh, Sorbo because he's a, he's a Trump supporter. I'm a good guy. Look at me. And it's like, eh. You're not really a good guy. <laughs> You're kind of a dick. <laughs> so in a way, it's 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 a little bit virtue signaling. I can see it maybe that way too. But yeah, uh, it it's it's a bad way to form. It seems like it, it's just one of those things that yeah, the news kind of, or at least the comic book news kind of just took it up and ran with it, right. and. It's just stupid. Yeah. Uh, right. Just reeked of stupid from the beginning. Right, right, yeah. It's like, that's how news is, right? Uh, it, it, sometimes they'll find something that is completely off kilter uh, and just run with it, you know? And this was one of those things that he, the person that, the promoter just up and ran with it. Right. But it's just, like I said, it, for Kevin to say what he said, it's like, whether you like his opinions or not, you know, yeah. um, the, for those out there, he then de- again, Kevin tends to do get p- political. Um, he's on one end of the spectrum where someone like, um, Mike Rowe is on the completely different end of the spectrum. Right. Um, I'm not knocking Mike Rowe because I've seen some of his stuff on Facebook and it's funny as shit. Right. Uh, uh, well, see, it's and, just like us. We, like we support diversity. Well, I do. At least that's for diversity in comics and stuff like that. And a lot of people don't like that. But, like, you know, it has nothing to do with if I saw you at a show and you had a, you know, a, a Riri Iron Man shirt on, I'm not going to, like, chastise you. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, like, if like one of your favorite, like, creators is one of the people that he's fighting with, I'm not going to chastise you. That's, that's not my job. My job is to go to a con and have fun, you know, meet the people that support what we do. Um, meet the people that support what I do as an independent business. You know, no, nothing. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and like chastise people for their own personal beliefs. It's stupid. Like if I go to a um, uh, awesome con this year, which is more than likely uh, at least on on that Friday, that th- when I go, it's going to be and I do record uh, like video footage. Uh-huh. Um, that it's going to be kind of like how I did a little bit of uh, with Matt's show last year, yeah. the September show. It's going to be like, hey, look, it's so and so. Like if Joe's going to be there uh, uh, promoting, you know, Girls of the Finest or uh, the the GI Joe group she's with, like the Finest. It's going to be look, it's Joe Colton you know, from the Finest, you know, <laughs> and she's here hawking her stuff, and the, you know, the charity Girls of the Finest, you know. Uh, here, the website will be in the description. Go, you know, help support when it starts, you know. We'll probably have her on our show when it's going again, you know, that sort of thing, you know. Just giving hype, giving hype, giving hype, you know. It's like, oh, here's somebody somebody else. Look at all the great shit they have on their table. What's your website? Tell us, you know. Yeah. You know, it's just hype and just bring bring people up, you know. Yeah. And Not being the man on the st- down. Right, right. Because, like, the whole point of a convention is for people to get together and exchange ideas. I mean, that, why, otherwise, why have one, you know? It, 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 right. You could call it a sale if you want to for some, for one reason or the other. But, like, 
most people get together at conventions because it's people that they, you know, that they like to see, people that want to get together and talk, people that, you know. When I come as a vendor, a lot of times I leave with a couple of new friends. Right. The people that are around right. me and the other vendors that come and buy stuff from me and, like, you know, uh, we share ideas, you know. And I usually will leave with a couple of new friends. And it's 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 right. really neat. That's and that's one reason why I love conventions. I I'm learning have... that whole aspect of myself. I'm learning being part of this. I'm learning that back end of things, yeah. um, or behind the table of different things, and being press and that whole aspect. It's a very learning experience, and one of which I'm going to say it right now. Uh, I'm beneficial for Matt uh-huh. for helping me learn, uh-huh. and uh, Otacon for helping me learn on. Matt on the smaller scale and Otacon on the larger scale because it's two different things. And, I, yeah, I'm giving props more so to to Matt because he keeps me trained in a way, (laughs) in a positive way, uh, because if I don't, I get to lose a skill or two. So he's helped him, like, hey, come down to our show. You know, you're invited to our show. It allows me to keep skills alive and contacts alive. So, again, I'm promoting Matt. You know, I'm, I'm hyping him up. He deserves his own credit in his own right. So, um, and it's it's that sort of thing. It's like I'm learning. And on the back end, yeah, I do. I love being a ticket holder because I tend to be like uh, uh, Neil from uh, Skeleton Key. Why are you selling this? You know, I, I, I turn into Neil. It's like, why do you have this? <laughs> How the hell did you find this? Yeah. <laughs> See, I, and, I like both aspects of it. I, I like being a, a participant, but I also like being a, a vendor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there, there's great aspects to both sides. Um, and hair pulling scenarios in both sides, too. Yeah. But more so, I think I like being a vendor more so. Because, just because, like, you, you get... it's. To me, it's more of a, a relaxed atmosphere when you're a vendor. Like, right. you kind of show up way before the show. You don't have to worry about as much. Like, you really don't have to go anywhere. There's no agenda. You're just kind of there to sell stuff and, like, talk to people. And that's kind of cool. And promote stuff yeah. and so forth and so on. So. And it, it's just that whole aspect of, again, learning. That it, It's what I... I want to say it's like I, I know, folks. This is kind of the boring stuff, but it, it's it can be educational out there for you guys as, and gals as well. It's just that you know, being on the the vendor side of things and well, the promoting things, it, it's a learning. Uh, it's why being at a show like Matt's, I get to try stuff out beforehand. It's uh, it's a way like comedians or uh, uh, or bands going to a smaller venue. To try out new material, new songs, uh, to see how it plays in a smaller venue before going on to that extremely large venue. I don't think this is boring for like, well, I mean, I would hope it's not boring for the people that listen to the show. Because it's a big part of what we do, and it's a big part of what the culture has evolved into. A lot lot of the culture really revolves around conventions. Um, more so than the actual materials anymore. I mean, if you look at comic book sales, they're down across the board. So, like, to say it's a Comic-Con, you know, culture, um, or a comic book culture, it's really not anymore. It's more of a convention culture because you have a lot of aspects of the media involved now with the TV shows and with the uh, cosplayers and... Just all the other like stuff that goes into it, like the other the the I guess you would say the fringe geek stuff that goes into everything that a convention. And, and I think that's the biggest aspect of uh, part of why people come out to these things is because that's what they're into. It's not so much like I said, like they're not reading the books as much anymore, but they are part of the culture. And right, that's where like when you do something like what that guy was doing. You're, you're getting off the rails and you're shutting people out instead of including people, and that's not what the culture's about. Right, right. I know um, when I f- went back to Baltimore, I think, when was it, 2013, 2014, something like that, uh, 
Yeah, it was 2000. Yeah, something like that. And the person that uh, I bribed to uh, get me up to Baltimore, he was he's not really a comic book. He's kind of a geek, but not really a comic book geek. And he was like, all right, I get to, you know, experience the convention for the first time. And he was like, I don't think I could find anything for me at something like Baltimore. And I'm like, you know, just give it a shot, man. I'm paying for your goddamn ticket and gas, you know, and meal. So just, you know, go with the flow. Have some, we're going to have some fun. Did he have fun? Hell yeah. And one of the things he told me was, now he went, I had about 100 bucks saved up to spend at the show. Right. He didn't have a goddamn dime to spend at the show. Um, and he told me flat out, I should have brought money to spend at the show. Yep. <laughs> and he said, I had so much fun, but I'm also pissed. Why are you pissed? There was, and he, he said, I'm a big um, Hot Wheels and uh, Matchbox collector. And there was like three vendors with all Matchbox cars. God damn Yeah, it. you're going to find something. It, trust me. They will show up because if there's a niche... They will be there to, to you know, to, to scratch that niche. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe it! I gotta go back and get their cards." But we had fun. He had fun, and and it was just like uh, during that time, it was like he coined the fr- phrase because he saw all the cosplayers that were. Uh, uh, I want to put it politely, yeah, because we were polite, we were very courteous. Uh, that were uh, scantily clad. Uh, he did not harass. He did not uh, uh, do anything wrong. He'd just look at me and go, God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, he's like, did you get a photo of any new cosplays? Because we kind of split up at one point. I went, yep, here's one. He went, God bless America. <laughs> well, to that I say, who has not felt that way when they see certain cosplayers? I, I right, think, I right. Think that's, unless I'm wrong and I'm behind on the times, I think that's the, um, I think that's their end game. <laughs> I really do, because if, if they didn't want that attention, I don't think that they would be dressing the way they do. It, it, again, uh, we're not, uh, I'm not saying that you, should, anybody who is harassing no. or bug, it, it, bug no. Be, no, 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 it's just that when you we, see we'll someone who them. is, uh, you know, that we, you know, it's just a matter of fact, oh, that that outfit looks great. It looks wonderful, and it's very form-fitting. It kind of makes you want to stand at attention and go, God bless America. And, and please, uh, please don't please don't think that uh, that person, when they were getting dressed and looked in the mirror and went, God damn, I look good. Because <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Before, because we're rambling on about this, uh, let's move on to what you. Yeah, I'm about to ramble on. <laughs> I know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, YouTube has put on another uh, aspect of things because of the whole Logan Paul. Uh, he's oh, a dick. Yeah. And let's what's leave it at that. Ask, how um, do you think? That, what, what's your feelings on how they uh, attempted to um, clear this up? <laughs> Uh, the whole aspect of now you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 li- lifetime views uh, in, within a year in order to start earning money again on that everything is kind of uh, fucked up. Uh, yet there are a couple of big YouTubers. Um, and the sound that you hear is not uh, Big Candy trying to do something rather sick. He's, I think, cleaning something. And that, I'm not... Sorry. <laughs> I, I was cleaning my screen off. Uh, is that what the kids are calling it these days? <laughs> Bad joke of the night. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know there was one or two. Uh, there is uh, one or two YouTubers who say, "Oh, if you can't get one thousand subscribers, you're you're nothing." You're doing. I'm like. Well, obviously, I'm doing something fucking wrong because I can't get a fucking single uh, listen on my shows like, or the know, videos that I do. Like, do you know what you have I, to do to, like, get subscribe? Like, you got to understand, there are so many podcasts out there. There are so many, you like, wannabe YouTubers out there. Let's put it this way. My little five-year-old, his dream right now is to become a, 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 a YouTube gamer. Right, and I'll help. Right, I'll help him. 
as much as I can. But, like, I can't guarantee him that he's going to have, like, you know, the followers and, like, you know, the the, the people, like like some of these bigger people, like, you know, the, the, well, I won't say PewDiePie's of the world, but, like, you know, the, what's the one guy, Monday Matt and all those people? Like, he's, yeah. I don't know, he's, I don't know how well he's going to get that kind of attention. But Right, or... The, the aspect of I know someone at work who's a kind of a YouTube gamer. I think he only has like maybe two or three hundred subscribers on his channel, yeah, and it's so like so many other people that people are watching right now. Like I watch a guy, like, I watch a guy every day. Well, there's two people that I watch nearly every day. Uh, one is One Shot Girl, and she's only got two hundred fifty thousand. I mean, I say only, but that's still that's low numbers for technically for like somebody that's like kind of like a gamer or whatever um because there's another girl what's her name like rebel or rebel or something like that she's got like three million subscribers right and plus you have all the twitch people as well uh which kind of reminds me if we're at another uh mat based uh event Mm -hmm. or i should say a uh team four state event uh, and I'm putting it very politely and very respectful. And if uh, one particular cosplayer there, I think her name is Intervenus or Inter. Um, sh- Inter- shit, let me bring it up. Intervenus? <laughs> Intervenus. Um, I'm butchering her name big time. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I, yeah, in- Intraventus. I N. I N T R A V E N T U S. Sure. Uh, she's not only a cosplayer, but she's a Twitch Twitch gal, if you want to say it, put it politely. And we could probably talk to her about her, not just her cosplay, but being a Twitch streamer. Right. And, and get you know what it takes to get fo- a following on Twitch. It's what you very know, hard. Re- you know, in regards. And I want to say, I'm, yes, I'm sounding a little bit sexist, but I'm, uh, I apologize. It's probably easier for a gal to be to gain followers on oh, on sure. Twitch or sure. or on YouTube uh, versus a guy. Yeah. Trust me, uh, if either of the, the girls that I watch, if they weren't easy on the eyes, I probably wouldn't watch them as much. I'm not again not being sexist. This is that's just human nature. It's just truth. But I just wanted to get that out for, you know, somewhat context. Yeah. It, does it happen? Yes. No. Uh, should it happen? Uh, I'll leave it up for debate. Right. Um, uh, so if you guys want to uh, weigh in on that little subject, you know, just send, shoot us an email at longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Uh, but uh, what else? Oh, yes, yes. Uh uh, I've been hearing rumors, uh, even though it's not really geek related, but I've been hearing rumors that, uh, the fluffy one himself, Gabriel Inglacius, is making a comeback. He's starting his tour again, or starting to tour again. And for some of you who might not have known, uh, he took, uh, last year, uh, he took, towards like the end of the year, he had to stop. He had to, uh, uh, quit. Uh, for a little while, he had to, he had to cancel a lot of his shows last year. Uh, pretty much, what was happening was uh, stress. Uh, a lot of the stress in order to relax, he was taking in alcohol. Uh, with it, and plus his fight with diabetes and everything else, he needed time off just to relax. And one of the things I think in one of the articles it was out saying that yeah, uh, it when he first started. It was fun. It was like uh, this greatest thing ever. And with his rise to fame, that I'm not knocking Gabriel Iglesias. He he does his thing. He does his thing great. And it's just one of those things that you know, in order to him to keep up, he just wanted to keep working and working and working and working and working. And all of a sudden, it just hit him. It was like I, I need to stop. I need to back off a little bit. I need to take time to breathe, get well, and you know. Just readjust, and he has some voice work in, and it's not like he, he he's just like I'm gonna drop off the face of the earth, but he just needed time to recoup and make amends with his family and uh, 
set things right. Made him because he he's married. He's got a kid too, and he's he apologized to his kid for you know missing birthdays. He's like, no, nah, Dad, I understand. So it, it he's back. He's going to be working hard again. Just that he hit his limit and he knows where his ceiling is, and that way he can approach the line and come back. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. That's that's a good thing. Like you know, no, it, knowing your limits is always a a very good thing. And for, yeah, for yeah. him to actually like without you know, at least he didn't go off the off the rails, go off the deep end, and like you know, do something horrible or, or right, end, right. Or end up like a lot of people end up, you know, like just ruining their careers and ending up dead. <laughs> oh yeah, I was about to say that. Uh, have that you know, uh, drug overdose due to whatever illegal substance. Yeah. And, you know, ruin their career or something like that. He, he hit that, realized it, and I think he has a lot of good support system or might have a lot of decent support systems behind him that uh, would, you know, hey, you, you know. And plus his fans understand, so he has that. So it, he, he's not losing anything. He hit it right. He nipped it right in the bud, so to speak, and that way he's able to come back just as strong. He might have taken a hit. But it's, you know, not much that's going to completely damage him. So, and it's done in a good way. Uh, also, that kind of being said, uh, due to the sad note that we had, I think, uh, when was it, uh, late last year with Tom Petty's passing, oh, yeah. uh, uh, the autopsy report came out, uh, I think, within the past couple of days. It was uh, an accidental drug overdose. Yeah. Uh, because it was, folks, it's not in the way that, uh, uh, you think, uh, just that everything that he was taking, he was legally prescribed because he was having, like, I think the report said he had heart issues, uh, he had, uh, uh, hip issues, uh, uh, and so forth and so on. And he just accidentally, which tends to happen with most people, oh, did I take medication within, uh, Earlier, uh, no, I didn't. Let me take a couple extra, you know, a pill or two now, and that way I don't have to wait wait about it. So it was just one of those type of flukes. It was just an accident. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a big Tom Petty, yeah, Tom Petty. I'm a big Tom Petty fan. So it, it wasn't like, oh, he was sniffing, you know, 15 pounds of cocaine, and that's why he he passed. What? No, no, it was just like. He had all these ailments, and he just accidentally took a couple too soon. So, or he took too much too soon. Yeah, that, it's great. Either way, it's crazy, but you know, it, it happens. I mean, that's what Heath Ledger. He was kind of wigged out on. Uh, it was unintentional because he was wigged out on working on the Batman movie, and then like, would he take uh, a sleep aid? And. Various. And something that was a sleep aid and something else, and it just was a deadly concoction, killed him. Plus, I think half the stuff that he was taking was illegal to begin was with. Was it? I don't, I don't yeah. know that for sure. I don't know that. I think a lot of it was, you know, um, some reports are saying he got the stuff illegally from one of the uh, uh, twins from Full House. Oh, yeah. That, I yeah. remember hearing about that, yeah. So it it's kind of hard to say. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. No, no, no I think uh, uh, I'm just going. Oh, I did see uh, that. Thank you for comicbook.com's Facebook page for reminding me about mm -hmm. it. Uh, I did get to see. Uh, I thought it was going to be a series. Uh, we could, there's two additional topics we could kind of touch mm -hmm. on. Uh, one of which is I did get to see on Netflix was. Uh, uh, the animated thing of uh, Godzilla, oh, King yeah. of Monsters. Uh, it it was pretty good. I liked it. It was kind of slow a little bit, but I liked the twist at the ending. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be like a series, but the how, in reference to, it was like one of those things like, it's going to be a movie, but when you pull it up, it's like a series. But, and it's it's going to be like a movie type of long form Series, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't. Um, 
Uh, I want to see what more happens to it. Hopefully, we get more. And the other thing I want to kind of touch on is that I've been hearing tappings about it. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, nothing's coming up about? How, part of me wants to touch on it. Is that uh, Lindsay Lohan's wanting to be Batgirl? Uh, what? <laughs> Yeah, Lindsay Lohan has been uh, trying to uh, come out and say, try to revive her career, saying that she wants to be uh, Batgirl in the DC Universe in some way, sh- shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Kind of to like, resurrect her career. But uh, most of the people are kind of like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, no. And, Sorry, Lims. So, and basically, she's like, uh, the reason why everybody's saying that is because of what happened, you know, her ordeals with the law yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, the, yeah. Like, you crazy B-word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could say it on the show. You've said harsher <laughs> words on this show. In the past. Probably last week, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, but uh, it's... It's that aspect. It's like not to mention. I think the last, what was the last movie she did was Herbie, yeah, or some shit like that, and it didn't do well. Yeah. So it's like, well, you're not the per, not just your what happened to you with the drugs, the the court shit, but the last few movies you did didn't do well. So why do we want to bank on you? Right. And her stealing from sets and just all the, all that stuff, man. Did anybody forget just a couple of years ago what a travesty she was? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, oh, oh! Stealing from sets. Oh, like you and I wouldn't do shit. Well, I'm saying like apparently it was like real freaking bad, like stupid, like like jewelry that was like not hers that was worth a shit ton of money. Oh, that's one thing. But you and I would be still in, like, oh, is there going to be a sequel to this movie? No? Okay. Take anything that's not nailed down that's yeah, <laughs> right. that's been used on screen. Scripts, <laughs> lamps, <laughs> rocks, anything. But you know what I'm saying, though. But, yeah, if it's, if it's like, so-and-so, let's say she's on set with, like, Scarlett Johansson and Scarlett Johansson brought, you know, uh, fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry on set, so her her character could use it, or have it on, her, so she could use it as uh part of her costume, and Lindsay stole it. Yeah, that's fine. You know, rest her ass, you know, and charge her up the uh, Ying line. But if it's something like you know, uh, you know, Stephen Amell stealing a part of uh, you know, no, no, no. if they use practical, you know, uh, stealing something, you know, off a set for, you know, hey, Arrow's getting canceled. Oh, I'm stealing the mask from Arrow. You know, that, that that's probably something different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm just using, <laughs> you know, the, the little eye mask or and the hoodie, you know. It, that's probably something, you know, it's, yes, it has value, but it's not something like, hey, we're, we're going to be needing this later on, or it's probably not going to be worth that much. Yeah. Yeah, apparently it was like it was it was like jewelry and stuff that was worth a lot of money. Apparently, like like real deal fucking shit that she shouldn't have been taking. Right, but it, it's what else can we cover? This not but it, this has been. Wait a minute. Let's let's check our let's check our page. Let's check our page. Maybe there's something I share. You uh, you've seen. Yeah, I posted up on our page, uh, the show's page, Facebook dot com slash. The Long Coat Mafia Podcast, we uh, put, put up, at least I put up and shared, uh, the Star Wars en- uh, Battle for Endor movie. Yeah! <laughs> I never seen it before. <laughs> it was good. What What'd you think of the travesty? It was, it was actually good. <laughs> like, I was like pretty impressed with, like as far as like, like an 80s movie, you know, like, how involved it was for what it was. I mean, for it, like, I, if it was like a PG rated movie that would have been in the theaters, I would have went and saw it. You know what I'm saying? If I was a little kid, right. I would have saw it. 
Okay, and... I thought it, I thought it was actually great. I don't. <laughs> is it supposedly like a bad thing or something? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I, I just one of those things. They kind of uh, Star Wars uh, people, the Lucasfilm aspect of things, kind of acknowledge it, yet they don't want to acknowledge it. It's like they. It's not like uh, the holiday special right. where you bring it up. There, uh, it's like, oh, what about the holiday special? What holiday yeah, what? special? We don't not, you know. Uh, it's like they draw a blank and they like ignore it. With uh, some this and I think the two TV uh, specials that they put out, they'll be like, uh, uh, they they will acknowledge. Yeah, we did it, but uh, they, they ignore it. Don't don't look at it. You know, you uh, don't acknowledge it. Don't 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 talk about. It. We don't want to talk about it. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so if they acknowledge it. Yeah, we did it. We just don't want to talk about it. Uh, unlike you mentioned, like yeah, I saw uh, you know the holiday specials on YouTube. Uh, what? First time I'm hearing it. What's this holiday special shit? Uh, <laughs> you know the one you did after Star Wars, the original one. What? Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I mean the one with the whip, whip, whip thing in you know, Chewbacca's family? What? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and after you mention it, and they kind of remember it, somebody in black comes up, pulls out a memory wiper, and just flashes them. You know, <laughs> one of those type of ordeals. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, another thing I want to kind of touch on that we kind of shared. Um, it, I don't know how true it is. I'm going to say it like that. It's kind of alleged. Alleged. Uh, alleged. Allegedly. One of my favorite terms. Um, someone kind of le- uh, linked, or it was linked, that Roman Reigns was uh, part of steroid distribution uh, thing. I put that up. Let me bring up the article. I believe it. Uh, uh, it was the. It was came from the, the Bleacher Report. I don't know how true of a uh, reporting agency they are. It said, uh, the article states that a former gym owner implicated Roman Reigns in a steroid distribution ring that resulted in an investigation by the DEA. Um, this goes back to February last year. They said uh, Rodriguez was part of a distribution chain that imported goods from China and manufactured illegal steroids in Arizona, then distributed them from Miami. Uh, said uh, the article ends with uh, the WWE suspended Roman Reigns for 30 days in June 2016 as a result of a wellness violation. Yeah, so I remember that. it doesn't go too much in regards to. I said I want to bring it up because you're kind of the wrestling guy. Well, and, I uh, I am, but I haven't been like I haven't watched it like honestly like in months. Like I've been kind of keeping up on the outside. But, I mean, I, as far as me, like, following it like I did, nah, I haven't. But I, would I put it past it? No, nah, I mean, he's, like I said, he's actually got in trouble for wellness violation before for that exact same thing. Uh, so, you know, it, what's the likelihood of him actually getting in trouble for that? It's likely. It's very likely. And one of the... Uh... Let's kind of make this the last topic, because unless there's other stuff that you want to cover or talk mm-hmm. about that uh, in regards to responding to the last three or so weeks of uh, stuff I put up. Um, one of the last things is that they're kind of uh, – uh, everything in regards <laughs> to the new Spawn movie is coming together. Uh, they're having a few people uh, in mind for certain roles. One of the roles is uh, uh, in regards to Twitch for the Spawn movie – is uh, they have eyes on Gary Oldman as Twitch. Mm. Uh, I kind of see, I kind of see it a little you think bit. You do that movie though. I I don't know. I mean, I can, I, but I, I can think see it's him, in, you know in the part. But I, I coming off of like Darkest Hour, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean he, he 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 is an actor's actor, and he does do a lot of like weird roles, but. And he's good at playing a part in uh, that. You're like, wait a minute, Gary Oldman did that he, shit? Well, wow. I actually saw Darkest Hour. I'm a huge, I don't know if you know, but I'm a huge Winston Churchill fan. And so I went and saw the, the Darkest Hour. Are you, are you familiar with it? Uh, a little it bit. It kind of takes place um, uh, like right after Dunkirk or during, well, I should say during the events of Dunkirk uh, and what, 
Great Britain did afterwards. So it's during his first, I guess, couple months as the new prime minister of Great Britain uh, back in the 40s. So the entire movie, like, you're looking at this character and, like, you know what Gary Oldman looks like. Right. You're looking at this character he's playing is you know, you know, uh, it, it, it's just unbelievable the transformation. Like you know, props to the to the department who did the the makeup, but also props to him for like embodying the character. You know, Winston Churchill. Right. Well, I guess it depends on when it's going to be filmed yeah, okay. and when it's released, but. You never know. You never know. It could be yeah. if the script. The I want to say like, this: Is there the a script, budget? Like, what's the budget? Like, is it like high dollar budget, or is it like uh, the article? I don't think has stated what the budget mm. is. Um, but the uh, if let's say for most actors, I want to say that uh, Gary Oldman is one of those actors that if the script is right and it's a challenge. That he might want to try to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a challenge for him to try to, you know, conform to this role of Twitch, that if he could, you know, we're talking about someone who played, uh, didn't he play like uh, Chief Gordon? Yeah. yeah. So he's not a stranger to the comic book But role. I mean, those, are, those so, are high profile movies, though. I mean, you gotta right. think, like. Batman's not a slouch. You're talking about Spawn. Like, Spawn, who is kind of... Comic book fans know who he is. But everybody else, like, right now, like, you'd have to reboot that entire... The only reason a Spawn movie got made in the first place was because Spawn, the the comic book, was selling out of comic book shops in the 90s because people thought the damn thing was going to, like, fund them through college. You know, their kids through college. Um... In the, in in the future, like they were buying that thing, like it was going out a bit, like you know, going out of style. Um, right. That's the only reason that movie got made. To make it again would be just like a, like a almost like a like a passion project. I, I uh, for Todd McFarlane, it sounds like it is kind of a passion project. And with even though we're kind of at the height or just after the height of, as we were talking about earlier in regards to. The comic book movie trend, yeah. it depending on how soon it's released, that if it's if, right at that tail end, his timing is that, horrible. Let's put it this way. right. Like he he made that movie well before the the comic book hype was anywhere near what it was like say like five years six years ago. Right. So that movie it tanked because people didn't get it. They were like, eh, Spawn, whatever. I think it's going to have the same reaction, even if it does get a budget. I think it's just it's going to tank. It's there's there's nothing backing it. Who's buying the books? You know, what 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 th- what what are you, what are they going to sell the idea of Spawn on? You know, what I mean? like right. who's going to go see it? I mean, at best, this thing's going to be like a three week release that'll hit DVD. In three, maybe two, three months after it, it comes out in theaters, and it'll do okay in rentals. I, I think there's a possibility that you're right. It's it's not like let's. Oh, what's a decent example? Let's take Ant Man for example. Right. Uh, it it's not like yeah, Ant Man. Like who at the time? Who the fuck's Ant Man? What was the billing in it? Like the top billing? Uh, you know, it, it was it was what's his face? Um, Paul uh, Rudd. Who at the time was not was just, still hot. So, like, I mean, Spawn would have to have a hell of a hit. Not just that. Well, I'm talking about as a property. Well, but uh, Yeah, people want to see Paul Rudd, but it's a, uh, it was a Marvel property. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they saw – people saw Marvel. It was what? Therefore, it was. That, it was Marvel looking for another Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Did it work? No, kind of? really. That that movie, not, yeah, not really, but it kind of did. Okay, it, it kind of did because of what it was and when it was released. Right, release it now, but yeah. no, no, it won't do. Won't have done as no. much. Um, 
I don't think the sequel, Ant-Man and the Wasp, is going to do as no, good. Not. But um, this is going to probably do a little bit worse because of the timing and how obscure it yeah. is. Um, but that's kind of like my worries in regards to Battle Angel Alita right. or Alita Battle Angel because it's not uh, – it's the problem that, as I told uh, Sasha, is that when I was on her live stream is that it's obscure. It is obscure. It, it, it's obscure, which in this, uh, in Battle Angel's case, it could benefit it, meaning that since nobody's familiar with it, they're not doing the same thing as uh, Ghost in the Shell or Dragon Ball Z, where there's this whole bunch of hype behind right. it. Therefore, it's obscure. No one knows about it. Therefore, you're putting something out there that's mimicking the manga. Right. And the uh, one up, one or two episode uh, anime that was released that could draw people to that, which were instead of coming from the manga or the the comic to the movie, they're starting with the movie to bring everything back to the comic. Right. Seeing that, it's which not gonna work. It's one of those things that it could work <laughs> if the movie's done done right, and it also could fail horribly. And that's what I want to see. Uh, again, it's one of those things that I'm going into a movie that is like, this could be pass or fail, because I'm kind of a fan of this. It's what got me into comics in the first place. You know, collecting again was Battle Angel, one of those major things. And therefore, it's one of those aspects like, this could pass, it could fail. Let's You have a producer and a director that are well-known, well-liked, kind of. <laughs> uh, uh, James Cameron, I'm looking at you. Um, not so much Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez could almost give me... To me, again, Robert Rodriguez could have a $30,000 budget and make it look like $100 million. But... Uh, and still, you know, let's have fun with it. Uh, and he won't care if it makes money or fails. It's like here's the problem. And this is what if they want to continue doing these movies, especially if they go into anime, and I think that's going to be the next big proper like bunch of properties is going to be anime. If they want to go into these movies, they're going to have to take them a lot more seriously than they do now. They're going to have to, like, treat the projects like, almost like, not like comic book movies, but more like dramas. And actually shoot them, not like an action movie, but more like, you know, like when you read them, they don't read like action books. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you read them, they read like, they read like dramas, or they read like, you know, like, there's there's tragedy in the characters and stuff. <clears throat> They're going to have to step up their game. <laughs> More like As the um, audiences are getting older and evolving. I mean, I'm talking about even your 30 year old and you know 40 year old guys that are, that are watching comic book movies. They're they're not into the same things anymore. Right. It's got to be more like I, I. It's a bad reference. More like Krull. You have to have. Yes, it's got to have that fantasy element to mm-hmm. it, but it's got to be have a little bit more meat right. to it as well. More story mm-hmm. to it, and. Therefore, well, uh, I mean, you want to take a movie, an older movie like that, I would say more like a Conan movie. Yeah, like, something like a Conan. Like, yeah, that's a, probably a better example. Conan, like Conan, um, like you had like the aspects of like, yeah, he was the hero, but he was no no freaking angel. And you know, you had the darker aspects of of the of the Conan character, and like you know his relation with with his god, and like you know it's things like that, and like you know the 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 very real, like, like, um, what's his name? Uh, I forget the name of the character he played. Tulsa Doom or whatever. Um, James Earl Jones. Oh yeah. Like you get the, the gravity of his character in the, in the, in those, in the movie, like where like, he's just telling that girl to walk off that cliff and die because, you know, that's, you know, what, what's more powerful. Like, you know, he's talking about the sword and stuff. It's like, there, there's like a lot of like weight in those movies as far as like real life implications, like people dying and stuff. Like comic book movies are kind of silly because they're kind of oriented towards kids. 
they got to get away from that. Like the, uh, <clears throat> the the new movies, if they if they make like look at uh, take for instance, if they make Akira. I was just thinking yeah. like that. I want to see if that that turns out. I want to see Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez touch that, right? Because it could be brutal, and it, look at what Tarantino did with Kill Bill, oh. and with uh, Tarantino uh, Rodriguez, it's going to be fucking epic and look beautiful. Because if they if they if they kitty it up, because they think it's going to be oriented towards like kids and teens, nope, <laughs> it's it's going to no. fail. It's going to fail hard. So like. The only hope that you have, like with a property like Spawn, is that somebody doesn't kitty it up and takes it seriously. Uh, but you're still talking about a cape, you know, like a, a character that's like a superhero. It's going to be hard to market that movie. Now, I Angel, think Todd said it was going to be an R-rated movie. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. But like with all, the, it's just because of the themes, like hell and right. like, you know. You know, demons and stuff. That's why. I mean, you, but, but the, it's yeah, one of the, yeah. I, go think, ahead. I think in the future they're really going to have to reevaluate how they touch these movies. You know, because like I, I, I see even because they've waited. So I, I even see Infinity War not doing well in the theater. I think it's going to do okay. And it's probably gonna it's gonna make its money back, but I don't really think it's gonna do like giant numbers. Uh, I I've heard people in the uh, who are have their ears closer to the ground than uh, uh, kind of we do here at the uh-huh. show, uh, saying that uh, solo is going to be a write off. That it's going to do way less than uh, what Infinity War is going to yeah. do. And I also think like you know. I think the bigger, the big, the last big property they're going to do, which is coming out soon, is going to be uh, um, uh, uh, Black Panther. I think that I think that movie will do okay. Believe it or not, <laughs> I yeah. actually think that movie is actually going to do all right. But uh, as far as like you know stuff like you know any any Ant Man or any more Iron Man movies or anything, I don't think they're going to do great. Spider Man, especially like. They kind of goofed up on Spider-Man. Uh, a lot of it's going to go downhill. Uh, you, you're seeing a drop in uh, theater attendance. You're seeing a lot of uh, the blockbusters not being blockbusters during the summer uh, the way they're supposed to. Uh, they're gunning for mostly the winter releases now. What I'm um, going to ask you about. All right. In the same vein, and you, you have your ear closer to the pulse of this than I do. What's what's been the final result with uh, Star Wars? Uh, it's made uh, one point two billion uh, overall worldwide. Uh, worldwide. Uh, it didn't last. Uh, it lasted. Uh, China was supposed to. Uh, I've had people tell me, "Oh, not every movie does well in China." Uh, uh, in that sort of aspect, but uh, let me put it like this. World of Warcraft did excellent in China. <laughs> I love World of Warcraft. That was a good movie. <laughs> so, and there's other movies like Jumanji doing well in China. Uh, so, it when you have, see stuff like that, even though World of Warcraft was out like more than a year ago, again, Jumanji's doing well in China, better than Star Wars. Uh, let me put it like this: Star Wars was Lasted not even two weeks in China. It was pulled by every theater. And, yeah, uh, the first week out, it, I think it made, was was there not even let three weeks. It was pulled. Because you had comedies uh, doing well more, way better. Uh, one of the reasons why is that uh, it didn't do too well in China is because, one, the... Uh, a Chinese insider for the business has stated that, one, they like the prettier people, uh, their words, uh, and two, this is not a well, uh, Star Wars is not a well-established franchised, franchise in China like it is elsewhere in the well, world. So they, but they, but the thing is, Disney was banking on The Last Jedi doing extremely well in China. Uh from what I've been hearing, 
That's why they kind of pumped up the whole Rose character is because she was from Asian descent. That way, let's put an pretty much from what I've been hearing was let's put an Asian character in this. Therefore, it could do well in China in the Asian markets because there's an Asian character in it. So, and it in addition to all this, have you heard any more fan theories about the whole? Snoke and like anything else. Um, I've been hearing a lot. Well, Let's put it this way: I've been hearing a lot. <laughs> I sh- I I should uh should have uh tagged you into uh or at least brought into Facebook, showed you the link in reference to. I know you don't really watch uh the film theory YouTube channel, and he was like, "Yeah, the, the reason why I failed is because of my channel because they're blaming him for all these theories." What? Because, they're, they're, yeah, they're kind of blaming him for all these theories that are out there. And the all the bad, like, and, well, we, I've gotten it, too. Uh, despite what we said uh, before the new year uh, and everything dropped and the whole aspect of me trolling people while we were recording, it's just that, you know, it's like, forget about the bad writing. It's like the bad writing, this, that, and the other thing. And it's just that, I know there was one thing that, like, they had all these epic stuff planned, and the the Disney and LucasArts decided, nope, that's not how we want things. Um, And it's just like, but the fans are extremely split on this. Extremely split. And it's just, what I'll do is after the show, uh, sometime tonight, I'll probably tag you in uh, one particular channel that I've been watching that does a lot of... uh, Hollywood insider stuff, uh, and she's re. I'm saying she, yes, it's a. Uh, she's very good in explaining a lot of the money aspects of uh, more of the money aspects of things than some other people I've been mm-hmm. watching, and what her thoughts on. And it makes a lot of sense, and she has a lot of good points. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll link you. I'll pull up the. Um, uh, uh, the, that particular episode of film theory in reference to why everybody was like blaming him. It was like, oh, there's all these theory channels like the film theory channel on YouTube. Uh, well, it, and it, he explains why his theory kind of works out and what happens and, you know, the why people look for theories to explain shit and so forth and so on. Um, even though you got amusement out of that one theory you did in reference to, uh, what was it, uh, Wolverine and uh, <laughs> that author. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even though, uh, you know, it, it, guess it's supposed to be fun. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's kind of like myth. Watching film theory and game theory is like watching Mythbusters. Right. It's, you, you take it with – it's entertainment, but it's uh, – yes, it's, a lot of it's based in science, but it's – it, it's kind of like 50-50. You're, you're kind of learning something, and you're, it's kind of entertaining at the same time. Um, but I'll link them like after the show, and they'll kind of explain a little bit of things. It, it, too much to go into right, right. now. I just <clears> – <throat> so, so there were some new things that came to light is why I brought it up as far as like how they're explaining what happened and that it's not quite what we think. And that it's not over yet. And that if you take clues from what Luke did with the transmitting his image across the universe, blah, 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 that Snoke wasn't actually there, that, like, yes, he got cut in half, but he he wasn't really there. And that, um... I.e. shit theories. Yeah, shit theories. Anything, anything, you know... Perpetuate that he's not really dead, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I don't know. Wifey song. <laughs> Me. <laughs> so. Hi, missus. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Doing well. I'm trying to keep your hu- husband nice and behaving like. It's okay. It's fine. Swamp gas. Yeah. Where right. is that from? I made that. But yeah, so that that's the that's the theories, and I don't know. There's there's a bunch of them, and I was just like, my my brain kind of wanted to slip out my ear and fall on the ground because I was just like, stop trying to explain stupidity. <laughs> they screwed up. 
<laughs> and there's not one person, not one person I've seen online that's done a review that that will like not that, that will not say that that scene with uh, Carrie Fisher floating around in space was the stupidest thing they've ever said, seen. Everybody's pretty much unanimous. That is the dumbest thing they've ever seen in their life. So, uh, uh, what a travesty! I think. Uh, before we kind of close everything out, do the end pause so we can close it. I can put the end shit out in post. But uh, is there anything over the past three weeks that I've put out? Uh, that you wish to respond to or add to? Uh, no. I mean, I'm well, on that call, I wish you would have said you wanted to speak to that person's manager. Just, just <laughs> to get a different person on the phone would have been really funny, too. But other than that, no, not really. Everything's cool. <laughs> yeah, folks at home, uh, not everything we try to do here at the show is a... Uh, a home run and hitting it out of the park. Uh, so there are times that what I think it would be a home run is no, <laughs> it's a foul ball, but it, it, it's something that it's for your entertainment and it's edutainment uh, in some way. So we try to hope, hopefully we'll get a few things in and uh, 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 there's a few callbacks. I got to, uh, or as I said, a few people I want to speak to in regards to being on doing crossovers and so forth and so on to see how busy they are. And uh, again, Jay, if you're listening to the show, uh, please message me so we can return the favor and probably get a few uh, mirrored episodes in as well. So I would be happy to work with you again and be on your show, uh, as well as trying to get a few others in as as well. Um, so that's it, folks. Uh, that's all I got to say before we start rambling on and just being goofy. Anything else on your end, or do you wish to say a out? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Okay, and... We're back, everybody! That's right, we're back. This is the tail end of the show. So, just want to let you guys know, if you disagreed with anything we stated in this episode... As always, you could email us at longcoatmafia at gmail.com or if you uh, want to stalk us, you could follow us on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash the Mafia podcast. You could send us a message that way telling us what you think. Plus, we are on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is longcoatmafia. Our Instagram is handle is also Long Coat Mafia. You could find not just this episode, while well, you found this episode in one way, shape, or form, but you could find our past episodes on our main page, going back all the way back to the beginning with the bad audio that we had, and but we had great content and great dreams, and we still have great dreams. You can see those dreams and hopes and all those past episodes on our main, again, one, once again, our main website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. That's right, the word the is in part of our web address. Plus, we are found on Apple Podcasts, if you're mobile. If you're not mobile, but you're using iTunes, we are found on iTunes. Plus, we are found on Stitcher Radio. Spotify, I think, and Google Play Music. So, plus, you can install our pod, the Podbean app that Podbean puts out, which is free for everyone on using iOS and Android OS phones, and listen to us that way as well. And right now, we are over 780 people are following us on Podbean right now, waiting for our new episodes to drop on a weekly basis, and those of you who are listening on a weekly basis through either the Podbean app, our website, or everything else, thank you so much for listening, so, plus, please catch us each and every week, we like hearing from you, we do want to hear from you, please, again, we do want to hear, if you don't like something, uh, and you disagree with us, and you want to talk to us, 
We're willing to hear from you. Please, again, our email address is always Long Coat Mafia at gmail.com. Plus, if you're following us on Facebook, you could message us that way. We do read emails on the air. So, that's that. So, please contact the show if you disagree or want to have a conversation. And for those of you finding us some way, somehow, and what we talk about is not necessarily your geek, please contact the show again at longcoatmafia at gmail.com and we'll probably have you on the show. Please, you again, just contact us. We'll set up an arrangement. We're kind of easy to work with. So, that being said, we're going to close out the show. Uh... We want to hear from you. Stay tuned. We've got some great things and stuff coming on the way. Hopefully, we'll get our press passes to AwesomeCon. Please, uh, whatever you do, I know it's kind of late to say that now. Do not bug or annoy or anything like that in regards to AwesomeCon. We don't want, want anything like that. We want our, you know, passes. Uh, we're, even though we try to sell ourselves to AwesomeCon if they listen to this show, but we don't want you bugging them, you know. <laughs> we honestly, we don't want you bugging them or annoying them. Uh, in regards to that, uh, we'll let us try to do that. We'll try to do everything within our uh, legal ma- means, and uh, in essence, saying, "Hey, we're over here. We're over here. Hey, hey!" But uh, that's that. So d- let us bug them. Uh, don't none of you guys bug or gals bug them. Uh, see you next week. Hope I won't say hopefully. Uh, <laughs> there'll be a lot of stuff in the coming weeks, months, uh, and so on. So stay tuned. Subscribe to us either through our, the website or the Podbean app or iTunes or Google Play Music, and or follow us on any one of our social medias, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, yes, we do have a YouTube channel. I. Uh, yeah, we got to put some more videos up on it. And but either way, all links will be in the description for the show. So, ta ta. Take care. Hope all of you have a good week. And listen on. See you next time on the Long Coat Mafia.